14-28 to go in the first quarter. West Virginia and Texas, 13 versus 17 as the Mountaineers are on their opening series. First down and 10 at the 43, Gus Johnson, Joel Clyden, Jenny Tab with you from Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium here in Austin. First down for Greer, a Heisman Trophy candidate. He's from Charlotte, North Carolina. And they'll hand it off. McCoy over the left side, and McCoy knocked out of bounds by P.J. Locke, but it's a gain of five. And again, these first down plays, what they're trying to do is slow down the pass rush, and they're doing it with a couple of different things. One, quick release out of Will Greer's hand, as well as getting the ball to the running backs in a number of different ways. A little toss sweep right there, just a run around that left edge. They're able to set the edge, very similar to what Oklahoma State did last week against this Longhorn defense. Greer, 13 and 5 as a West Virginia starter after leaving the University of Florida. And he'll hand it off McCoy again. First down, McCoy. Some good running as he gets to the 40. McCoy, a junior from Lexington, North Carolina. He gains 11. Watch the linebacker here. The linebacker gets totally out of place as he's going to get this, and then he's going to move over to his left, and the play is going to his right. Great hole opens up. McCoy gains yards. Greer to throw it this time. All day to throw. Delivers underneath and almost intercepted. That ball deflected. T.J. Simmons, the intended receiver. Well, they're banged up the wide receiver position. West Virginia is right now. Gary Jennings and Marcus Sims, two of their mainstays, have been banged up. They're going with Dominique Maiden and T.J. Simmons, and there Simmons just unable to corral that ball. Lenny Brown checks in at running back, number four, a freshman from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, second and ten at the 41. Greer, quick release this time, underneath, he's got his man. And Greer finding Giovanni Haskins, the tight end, for a gain of six. Boy, everything that they've thrown on this first series. Partner out of his hand quickly, not wanting that pass rush to get home and allow Will Greer to hold the ball in the pocket. That's what happened when they lost to Iowa State as well as the fact that they want to get into more convertible third down situations like they've got right here. Dana Holgerson calling the Iowa State loss a perfect storm. They just kicked our butts. Third and four to 35. Letty Brown running around the corner. And Letty Brown picks up a first down. Still on the move, gets to the 20. And finally upended inside the 20 yard line by Chris Boyd, but a flag on the play. If it stands, it's an 18-yard gain. Yeah, and Texas continues to stay in this structure of defense. This is the exact structure of defense that they were getting just gashed with in the first quarter last week against Oklahoma State. And Oklahoma State, they were using the exact same play, just that runoff tackle, because there's no one there for support. Illegal block in the back, number 13 in the offense, 10-yard penalty from the final foul. Replay third down. That was way down the field. Here you go. There's no edge player on this left side of the Texas defense. Letty Brown gets the hole. Great job right there. Breaks the tackle. And then here's where the block in the back happens. Down the field. Right there. The wide receiver, number 13, David Sills. Blocks in the back. And it's coming all the way back. But he did achieve the first down. So it is not third down. It is a first down. They just brought it back from the spot of the foul. So first down for West Virginia. From the 28-yard line, opening series for the Mountaineers. Greer, quick release. The hitch to the far side. Texas was ready. Sims with the catch, but some nice yards after the catch as he's finally taken down by Caden Stearns. A lot of times what you get is, is too much pursuit and right there Josh Thompson number 29 he actually over pursued that play and what it allowed Sims to do was come back under him and gain some more yardage gain of five second and five at the 23 Will Greer 23 years old he's married the father of a soon-to-be two-year-old daughter and one of the best quarterbacks in the nation and a flag I think they got a little jump there out of their right guard, Chase Barrett. It's a little flinch before the play. Ball start. Offense number 65. Five yard penalty, second down. Looks like that's Isaiah Hardy. Hardy, and they 
rotate in there on that right guard spot. So you're going to see Barrett and you're going to see Hardy. That time it was Hardy, the senior from Laurel Springs, New Jersey. 6'6", 335 pounds, a little early start. Second down and 10 to the 28. West Virginia having no problems moving the ball against this Texas defense. Greer to the sideline and it's caught. Marcus Sims, the junior. He's caught a pass now in 20 straight games. Well, this is your chance if you're Texas to force a kick, you know, force a field goal opportunity. That would be a win. That would absolutely be a win with the way West Virginia's playing. And another flag. I think it was another false start. Greer didn't allow him to get set. And there was some movement by West Virginia. All start. Offense number 88. Five-yard penalty, third down. Well, this is what you want to avoid against Texas. Right now, they've got one of the hottest pass rushers in the Big 12, as you see some of the movement up front. See right there, that kind of up back. Charles Aminahieu. And Charles Aminahieu is the one I'm talking about, Gus. You're exactly right. This dude is on fire right now. Six sacks in his last four games. Watch out for him in these third and long situations. Seven sacks on the season. Third down and ten. Texas with an opportunity to pin their ears back and bring some pressure. Greer out of the shotgun. Here's Greer. Let's it go off his back foot. Incomplete. Nice coverage by Chris Boyd intended for David Sills. And a little redemption for Chris Boyd. He was one of those players that was benched in the first quarter. And when he came in last week against Oklahoma State, he struggled, including a fourth and one fade ball just like this that he allowed to go for a touchdown. But here, great coverage. Maybe gets away with a little contact with that left arm, but is able to get up there right through the hands of Sills and knock it away. So that'll bring on Evan Staley into a tip to 45-yarder. He's 7 of 11 this year, including a long of 49 yards against Kansas. And good. Evan Staley, he was 3 for 5 against Baylor last time out, missing his first two. Making his last three, he gets off to a good beginning in Austin. 3-0. West Virginia. Fox College football is sponsored by Ram Trucks, built to serve. And by Wells Fargo, established 1852, reestablished 2018. Aerial coverage is brought to you by our good neighbors at State Farm. You're looking live at Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium here in Austin. Opened in 1924 with a capacity of 27,000. Today's capacity, 100,119. The largest stadium in the Big 12. Eighth largest in the United States. Little Jordan Humphrey. The deep man for Texas. Evan Staley will send it away. And he's going to get a chance at a return here or a fair catch because the wind is heavy right now, right to left here in Austin, probably blowing about 10, 15 miles an hour, and they're having trouble keeping the ball on the tee. So West Virginia now is going to have to go and, and have somebody hold that one there. Spoken like a scratch golfer. Exactly. You are always checking the wind. <laughs> Got to check the wind. But, folks, this is a two-club wind right now. It's, it's, it's a stiff wind. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. Texas will get their first opportunity. You know what, Texas, they say you're born with a pacifier and a golf club in your hand as they send it away. Will Jordan. And he'll be tackled at the 30. Good return for the Longhorns. And that will bring on Sam Ellinger, who's been nursing a tender throwing shoulder, but I tell you what, as a sophomore, he has had a sensational beginning to his career. No doubt about it. And I think what has taken him from good to now borderline great is the fact that he's got a great comprehension of the offense. He understands what's going on. That's what's led to that stat we just had up. Over 210 passes without an interception. This guy is taking care of the football. Through two interceptions. Week one against Maryland has not thrown an interception since. Here's Ellinger throwing on the move and he's got his man Devin Duvernay who dives forward and gets close to nine. Josh Norwood with the stop. This Texas offense doesn't do anything great but they're pretty serviceable everywhere. So they can throw it a little bit, run it a little bit. And I think they're going to want Ellinger to get loose with his feet today. 
Ellinger throwing over the middle this time, a little high, intended for Duvernay again. But the running game, so important for Texas, yep. they'd love to get it going. I think that really is all about their backs. And right now, the true freshman is getting the start. This is his second straight start, Keontae Ingram. He's explosive. Looking for the first down here, and Ingram has it. His forward progress got him over the line to gain. This is not a team that's had a lot of explosive plays this year on the offensive side. In fact, they're one of only two Power 5 teams to not have a play go over 50 yards, the other team being Rutgers. Now, this is one of those guys that can help them in that category, Keontae Ingram. He is explosive and a home run hitter. First down to the 41, opening series for the University of Texas. Here's Ingram. Not a lot of room. Good gain of yard, Giovanni Stewart. The junior playing at home. He's from Katy, Texas with the stop. You think he's not pumped up? You know he's ready to go today playing his home state. And this is a defense at the number one scoring defense in the Big 12. And they're very good up front. A couple of transfers that we'll talk about all day. Kenny Bigelow and Jabril Robinson from USC and Clemson have really solidified that defensive line. Second and eight at the 43. And a flag. start offense number 66 five yard penalty second down and call that on the left tackle Calvin Anderson but I did not see that at all listen they clapped and then they were going to shift the fullback and ah, little I guess, there. yeah there was a little rock forward wasn't there mm -hmm. second down at 13 Tucks it inside and is wrestled down by Kenny Bigelow, the redshirt senior from Wilmington, Delaware. And there's one of those transfers. He's a graduate transfer from USC and had a long history with actually David Sills, the wide receiver, because he played at Eastern Christian Academy, which was started by David Sills' father, which is a school that's basically a web-based school for football players in the Maryland area. And had that history, and so he came over here to play at West Virginia for his last season. Third down and 11 at the 40. Low snap handle. Ellinger under pressure. Throws, and it's incomplete. Little Jordan Humphrey just couldn't hang on, and Texas will have to punt it away. Well, that's exactly what they're not great at, is getting behind schedule. They get a couple of penalties there, and then all of a sudden, you've got to convert on a long yardage situation in this defense. They run exotic blitz packages, and they ran one there. Ellinger was unable to find Humphrey there in the back end. So Ryan Muchevsky punting from his own 26-yard line. David Sills is the deep man. And Sills will pick it up. And Sills wrapped up at the 11. A 48-yard punt, no return. Here comes Will Greer. And the West Virginia offense back after this. Time now for SoFi Power of Ambition. I think you handle high expectations with, with experience. You know, I've, I feel good about our senior leadership. Uh, we have, you know, 10 to 15 guys, you know, that have been playing a lot of football at, at West Virginia. Uh, they're older, they're mature, and, and you want expectations. All right, Dana Holgerson got his first and only coaching job at West Virginia in 2011. That was our Power of Ambition, sponsored by SoFi, a personal finance company to fit your goals. West Virginia takes over at their own 12, and they hand it off to Letty Brown. Texas ready this time as Chris Nelson makes the stick. This is an important series for Texas. I know it's early, but you got to think of this. Their two losses this year, they fell behind by 17 points in the first quarter. You cannot allow West Virginia to start getting out to any sort of a lead. A touchdown here would be double digits in the first quarter. And West Virginia offensively is just too potent in order to come back from that type of a deficit. Gate of two, Greer, delayed handoff, Letty Brown. And the Longhorns once again coming up with a play. Brecklin Hager with the tackle. And the senior 
gets up slowly. Yeah, he and there was a teammate of his that they came in kind of whipped around Anthony Cook, it looks like, number four. Watches Hager. He's going to come all the way inside here, and then he's going to loop back around in order to get the ball carrier. And there's the de defensive back, Anthony Cook, and they kind of leg whip each other as Hager is trying to make the play. There's Cook. Watch right there, and then boom. And he's also holding what looks like to be his right arm as well. So now a couple of starters. Devontae Davis leaves on the first series, the corner for Texas. And now Brecken Hager, a senior from right here in Austin, really kind of their emotional leader on defense. And captain. He leaves, yes. His father. Two career games, Gus. This guy's an experienced dude. Third down and eight for the Mountaineers. At their own 14. Here's the snap. Greer delivers and knocked down. Gary Johnson, the senior, got a big hand on it, and that'll force West Virginia to punt in their home territory. And what a great play it was because West Virginia's got a step on the outside. Watch this. There's the step, and Gary Johnson just reaches out from that linebacker spot and makes such a good play on that ball. Dominique Maiden had his man beat, and Gary Johnson saved what would have been a huge play for the Mountaineers. Billy Kenny will punt it. On the season, he's averaging 42 yards a punt with a long of 54. Deshaun Jamison is the deep man. Takes a bounce. Texas clears. And the Longhorns will open up on their second series with terrific field position. Can Sam Ellinger and the Longhorns get it going in Austin? We'll see right after this. And here are the Go RV sights and sounds from the, from the beautiful campus here in Austin, Texas. I tell you, man, I've eaten so much barbecue since I've been here. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? Oh, I can't help oh, it. I feel like man. a fiend. Hager being escorted off the field for UT. First down and 10 for Ellinger. And the Texas offense at their own 47. Down by three. Deontay Ingram in the backfield. And Ingram running with a crease. Kept his feet moving and he gets to midfield. Let's check in with Jenny. Well, the latest guest with Brecken Hager, he is going to the locker room. I know you saw him walking out there. It's an elbow they're concerned about. He will be looked at further. And as for Devontae Davis, they're worried about his shoulder. Both questionable right now, both being looked at in the locker room. Thank you very much. Second and seven at the 50. Well, with those injuries, this is imperative that you hold on to the football if you're Texas. You know, allow them to make some adjustments, get some of those young guys schooled up on the sideline. Here's the option. They pitch it. Ingram gets to the edge and with room. Cuts it inside. He's close to a first down. Josh Norwood brings him down, but I think Keontae Ingram may have gotten enough for the first. Yeah, I agree. I think that he needed the 43-yard line. I think they're going to ultimately measure this, but a little option on the outside designed to go to Ingram the whole way. Don't block the pitch, man. And you can see glimpses of that fire I was talking about, right? Right that first couple of steps. West Virginia, though, did a nice job of making sure to corral him, keep their outside arm free, force him back inside. So they give him the first down. Tom Herman comes from Houston. Prior to that, he was the offensive coordinator for three years at Ohio State when he had Ezekiel Elliott. He's looking for a Zeke type here in UT. From the 43, Ellinger pulls it out, stops, delivers. Incomplete. Duvernay, the intended receiver. So Ellinger is dealing with that shoulder, and guess what it is, is a sprain in the AC joint. That's where your collarbone attaches to the outside of your shoulder, and there's the ligaments there, so it's not a socket or a separation deal. It's just a sprain in that joint. They've, it's a grade one, yeah, right? Yeah, grade one, and you can play through it. You've got to deal with a little pain. They think that it affects him on his max velocity throws, so down the field and things like that on the outside is where it affects him. Second down and 10, Ellinger decides to run it. And Ellinger, he'll pick up the first down and more. That's what makes him special, a 13-yard gain. 
Well, he read that the whole way. They had some clear out routes that were running across from left to right. And what happens is Ellinger, he sees the big hole on the other side and he just takes off before he finishes his read because he saw so many green grass. Trey Watson comes in at running back now, the Cal transfer. And when you watch Tom Herman teams, you're going to see an Urban Meyer influence. Their quarterbacks run like Tim Tebow, Braxton Miller, JT Barrett. First and ten at the 30. Ellinger, sideline. Will Jordan makes the first man miss. And little Jordan Humphrey. With a nice game, Josh Norwood knocks him out of bounds. And that is a gain of five. Good tempo here from Texas on this series. Second and five. His man Andrew Beck, who was wide open, but there is a flag on the play. He was wide open. A great fake. There is no foul for holding on the play. The pass had already been thrown. It was a great fake and maybe even a little bit of an RPO style, but I think that this was just a straight play action here. Ellinger does a great job with the play action. Oh, Beck was wide open, wide open. Gus, I had an AC joint sprain. I thought what affected me the most was touch, not velocity. And you had a great four. I had a great four, and it is painful, but the touch is where I thought it most affected me. And right there, Ellinger unable to make the touch pass for a touchdown to Beck. Third down and five of the 25. Here comes the pressure. Ellinger in trouble. Flings it. and Ellinger's got no shot in the pocket. He's retreating and just throws it up. You can do that when you've got a guy on the outside that is 6'5", 225, and he goes up and wrestles it away. Wow. Little Jordan Humphrey. That was a sensational grab. Little Jordan came into this game with 46 catches. I mean, and what a great throw, too, for the position Ellinger was in. He gets two feet down there and not quite over that pylon. So I think they're correct in their spot of spotting him just short of the goal line. But my goodness, you've got to talk about a weapon. When you're a quarterback, you get the all-out blitz and you know you can just throw it up. And you ain't lying, man. That catch radius is like all of it. <laughs> all of it. What's his catch radius? All of it. All of it. Little George Humphrey, 6'5", Colin Johnson, 6'6", Andrew Beck, 6'4". Got some big boys at receiver for UT. And that was a fadeaway throw. And Gus, he threw that probably 40 yards off his back foot. And you talked to him yesterday in our meeting about Humphrey and Johnson and knowing how to get the ball to them to use their size. And, and he said, I had to learn really quickly, everything had to be up, which is a little counterintuitive because you always think tip passes, you know, things can go wrong up. As a quarterback, you want to think about frame, frame, frame. You're always trying to frame the After receiver reviewing up. reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is confirmed, short of the goal line, first down, Texas. Yeah, good call there. So you have to relearn and retrain yourself to throw it above his head, and that's why goes right up over the defensive back makes the play and Texas is in business so first down and goal of the one yard line Daniel Young comes in at running back he's a six footer sophomore weighs 225 pounds and Ellinger popping his collar right down feeling good Texas knocking on the door Ellinger runs it himself. Touchdown, Longhorns. He's a fullback that can throw it. Sam Ellinger. This season, he's rushed for 277 yards coming into this one. How about the
the block from Andrew Beck. I mean, he mashes down that left side. Ellinger reads the pulling guard and just finds the seam, gets skinny, and gets himself into the end zone. What a great drive there for Texas. Ninth rushing touchdown of the year for Sam Ellinger. Extra point up and good for Cameron Dicker. 4.36 to play, first quarter. Lil Jordan showing his hops. Sam Ellinger showing his power. Texas takes a 7-3 lead over West Virginia here in Austin. Fox College Football presented by Volkswagen is sponsored by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Go RVing. Find your away. Go RVing. 7-3, Texas with the lead as they went on an eight-play, 53-yard drive, scored in two minutes and 42 seconds. Sam Ellinger, nine rushing touchdowns this season. That leads the team. Well, with their defense being banged up, a nice answer there and took some time off the clock, allowed the defense to make adjustments and get some of those backups squared away so they can go on the field here. Brecken Hager is going to be out. Devontae Davis is out. Brandon Jones, the starting safety for them. He's out right now. He aggravated an ankle injury at the team hotel last night. Kind of a weird deal there, but this defense is certainly shorthanded for Texas, and that was an important answer from the Longhorn offense. Cameron Dicker will send it away. Devin Bush is the deep man for the Mountaineers. And Dicker sends this one into the end zone deep for a touchback. Let's go to Sam Farber in Los Angeles for a game break. Just two more top 20 showdowns to keep you up to speed on in the SEC. Number six, Georgia, and number nine, Kentucky. It's Jake Fromm to Isaac Nata for a four-yard Bulldog score. 7-0 is there in the second quarter. Meanwhile, number five, Michigan, scores on a Shea Patterson one-yard quarterback keeper. And the Wolverines lead number 14, Penn State, 7-0. Back to Gus and Joel. And I was watching your picks yesterday. You didn't pick Kentucky, but what a year for Mark Stoops and yeah. the Wildcats. How about there. them? They got a defensive player, Josh Allen. I think might be one of the better defensive players in the country now that some of these guys have been hurt. Greer over the middle. And dropped. Marcus Sims had that ball in his hands. And he just couldn't hold on in traffic. Now, I think he might have heard the footsteps a little bit because back there was P.J. Locke, and he could kind of see that P.J. Locke was bearing down on him. He had another player right there. That's the freshman, Anthony Cook, right on his back as well. Second down and 10 to the 25. Martel Penaway in it running back for West Virginia. He goes in motion. Greer, quick release, sideline. Once again, it's Sims, and Sims will drag defenders past the first down marker. Yeah, and they have said, Jake Spavadol, their offensive coordinator, told us that they want to get the ball out of his hand quickly, speaking of Will Greer on first down in particular, and slow down that pass rush. That's exactly what they're doing. First down at the 36. Texas, those defensive backs might have to start coming up and taking away that cushion that they've got at the snap of the football because right now these yards are just too easy on the outside. Greer hands it off, Penaway. And Penaway keeps his legs churning. And he'll get close to a first down again. This time a gain of eight yards. Really nice block by Matt Jones, the center, number 79. He was up on Gary Johnson. Some physical play in the back end, but they are running the football well here. Quick strike, David Sills. First down, Mountaineers. But there is a flag as Caden Stearns with the hit. I think they're going to get a block in the back. On West Virginia on the outside, that might have been T.J. Simmons, who was the outside receiver out there with David Sills, and he was trying to get a block as Sills was trying to get on the outside. Illegal block in the back, offense number one. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. It'll be second down. Here's Simmons, number one. And as Sills is coming around, see right there, right? He gets Chris Boyd right in the back. Excellent call by the officials. It's just something that you've got to avoid if you're West Virginia. So that'll make it second and six. Where Sills is at all times. 
from the 40. Sills with 37 catches this season. Greer delivers. Caught. Sills running. Touchdown, Mountaineers. 60 yards. And you said it. But there is a flag. It's down real late outside of the end zone. This might be something after the touchdown, but a blown coverage by Texas, and Greer knew it right away. You've got to know where David Sills is. He's the biggest weapon on that team, and he goes for a huge touchdown. David Sills, he's got great size at 6'4". The result of the play is a touchdown. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 13 of the offense, that penalty will be enforced on the succeeding kickoff. That's number 13's first unsportsmanlike in the game. You know what he did there? He gave the horns down. Well, here's the route, okay? He's going to come right there, and right there he slips past the safety, and that's the blown coverage. Caden Stearns has got to know he doesn't have help over the top. P.J. Locke tries to get over there, but he's unable to, and then here we go. He goes horns down, and that's what draws the flag. That's an unsportsmanlike penalty. They're... they're this officiating crew already today has been really? incredibly tight, incredibly tight. Okay. And there's another flag here after the play. These rules in college football are way too tight. I think this is ridiculous. Come on, guys. Let's go. What do we got? I get a little impatient. Yes, yeah. I, I, under I understand. We're four years in. You know that, right? Uh, yes, I <laughs> certainly understand point today. The play is good. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 55 of the offense. Number 55 is disqualified from the game. Wow. Are you serious? That's the left tackle, Rodney Kajust, the senior for West Virginia. Why in the world? I, I still can't. I'm, I'm watching the video up here, and there's been no explanation other than that he's just qualified. I can't see anything on the video that I'm replaying up here in the booth. Let's take a look here. Okay. Watch 55. 55's right there. He's blocking. Okay, there's where he gets. I guess because it, were they claiming that was a punch, I would guess. Well, that is a huge development. Could just is their best offensive lineman. Preseason all Big 12. He was an Outland Trophy watch list player coming into the season. D. Blandino, our rules analyst, is with us coming from Los Angeles. Dean. This doesn't look right. Yeah, I, you know, you're looking at it, and to a, disqualify a player, you want to see a punch, something along those lines. This looked like an open hand shot after the play. You want to penalize him, that's fine, but to throw him out of the game, it just doesn't seem right. Uh, this this crew is is way too tight today, and quite frankly, whether it's been something as small as those little leans in the false start, and it's been against both teams. So if I'm both fan bases, listen, Texas fans, I'm talking to you as much as I'm talking to you, West Virginia fans. I think the officiating crew has been way too tight today. So want them to be out here like choir boys all the time. It's an emotional game. It's a passionate game played by big, powerful men. And they're going to be emotional. They spend all of their time, entire lives, getting ready for moments like these. Let's not take it away from them in a moment like that. Here, here. West Virginia has to punt away, from, kick away from the 10-yard line. And with Jordan Humphrey with a head start, midfield. 40, and he gets deep inside West Virginia territory. Games like this remind me of Marv Levy, the former Buffalo Bills Hall of Fame coach, when he said to an official, you're over-officious. <laughs> and he added something to that at the end. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. But now 
Here's the adjustment, though. Listen, you and I up here agree. I'm sure the fans at home agree with what we're talking about in our sentiment. But, Gus, here's the difference. If a home plate umpire has a bad strike zone in the first inning, it's incumbent on you in the second to adjust. Night to adjust. That's right. So these teams and these coaches have got to adjust from here on out. First down, Ingram breaks the tackle. And Ingram with some powerful running. A gain of six. Reese Donahue with the tackle. Great field position here for the second straight series for Texas, and they've got to capitalize. And remember, I told you there's that stiff right-to-left wind, so when the wind is at your back, you've got to make some hay offensively. And certainly Texas has the opportunity right now. Second down at four of the 33. Ellinger to the sideline. Ellinger to Duvernay, and Duvernay picks up a first down. Hakeem Bailey defensively for West Virginia. And you see an Ellinger rip that ball out there. That had good velocity. I don't think his velocity has been hurt at all. He throws that back foot 40-yarder down there. The little Jordan Humphrey sets up a score. That was a far side hitch route, not an easy throw. And he's able to throw it out there with some velocity on the money to Duvernay. Gain of 12. First down to the West Virginia 21. And they're going to throw it again over the middle. Oh, caught. Lil Jordan touchdown. 21 yards. Great read by Ellinger. Great read. He sees David Long, the linebacker, number 11, and he's going to put his eyes all over him right from the beginning. And as soon as Long comes in, there's Humphrey. He gets right up the hash, and that's an easy touchdown for Texas. Ellinger doing a great job with his eyes, sucking the defender in, and then beating him over the top. Fifth receiving touchdown of the year for Little Jordan. And Texas with an opportunity to take a 14-10 lead. Dicker, and it's good. Interesting first quarter. 150 to go. UT on top of Fox College football is sponsored by Volkswagen. 14 to 10. Texas, the 17th ranked team in the nation, coming off a disappointing loss last week at Oklahoma State, taking on West Virginia, who blew out Baylor a week ago. Boy, a lot of developments in this first quarter. We've had a couple of huge starters on defense get injured for Texas. We've had the left tackle for West Virginia get ejected from the game on a highly suspect and questionable call, questionable call by the officials. And now a great game. We still, we, hey, we're 14-10. I mean, well, you knew it wouldn't be a 7-6 ball game with these two teams meet. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Dicker puts a foot into it and drills it once again out of the end zone. But David Sills, he is an explosive young man. 30 career receiving touchdowns. Remember Stedman Bailey, Tavon Austin? They were pretty good in West Virginia. Ooh, you passed Tavon Austin on a career list of West Virginia. You're doing something. And David Sills has been absolutely fantastic for this Mountaineer squad and more specifically Will Greer. Remember, Sills is a former quarterback and he understands defense. He can give the checks back to Will Greer as soon as Will Greer can give them back in to David Sills. A great match. Greer. Flips it out into the flats to McCoy. He gets his shoulder square, burst down the sideline, and delivers a blow at the end. What a blow. Anthony Cook threw himself under the chariot, but a flag. And there was a, just a sensational block on the other side by Trayvon Wesco, the tight end. Holding offense, number 12. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. That's Gary Jennings, the wide receiver on the outside. After Wesco got the block that really spurred them around the edge, and then all of a sudden down the field. There's Wesco. There's the block I'm talking about. And then now 12. There's Jennings. A lot of questionable calls in this game. Yeah, my, goodness. my goodness. It's called football, boys. Let's let them play here. Let's go. First down at 14. And Giovanni Haskins, the redshirt sophomore, 
from Bergen Field, New Jersey with the catch. Anthony Wheeler, Josh Thompson with the stop. This down in distance. Likely to get a little bit of coverage from Texas. They don't love to blitz on this second and medium, although they're right, right now it's kind of a blitzing look for them. Greer, near side, still to the catch. He gets out of bounds, gain a few. Chris Boyd defensively. I think you're going to see more and more of that quick passing game now without Kajust in the lineup. So defensively, how do you adjust to the quick passing game? Uh, you've got to get up close to the wide receivers. You've got to play bump coverage, and you see Chris Boyd doing it right now. Greer again drops it off. McCoy down the sideline. McCoy still running. And finally knocked out of bounds close to the 30. What right now, Weir Greer is just carving him up. That's a gate of 40 yards. What a great design. Watch right here as you're going to get the swing out of the backfield, and now he's just going to be gone down the sideline. The safety's nowhere to be found. P.J. Locke got caught peeking inside. Not the eye discipline that you want to play with there. First down to 10. Greer again winds up. And incomplete. But you look at this West Virginia offense. Dana Holgerson is 47 years old, but he has mentored under some of the best offensive minds in college football. Hal Mummy, Mike Leach, Kevin Sumlin, Mike Gundy. Also, he's coached with Sonny Dykes and Doug Meacham. He's given the official a bit of his mind right there, and rightly so, quite frankly. Second and 10 of the 32. Letty Brown in the game at running back. In motion now. Greer guns it and still it looked like he was ready. Chris Boyd jumped him and incomplete. You're exactly right. Did not look like he was ready and Greer wanted him to get that ball right out of his break. He came out of his break slowly and here you go. You got a third and long. This is where Texas really excels on the defensive side. You get a lot of pressure in this situation from Texas. It's incumbent that their corners have got to stay in front of the wide receivers and tackle after Greer gets the ball out of his hand. Third down and 10 to the 32. Greer. And a flag. I think West Virginia moved a little early. That snap just came late. Matt Jones kind of held on to that ball. Ball start. Offense number 53. Five-yard penalty remains third down. Colton McKivitz and Josh Sills, excuse me, yeah, Sills, the left guard and right tackle and the right guard in there, Isaiah Hardy, they all moved while Matt Jones hadn't snapped it yet. I thought that was a mistake by the center there inside. So that makes it third and 15. As they march it back. Now you got to be thinking about field goal range. It's not about converting the first down here. It's about getting enough yardage where you can still attempt the field goal. At this point with this win, Gus, they need to get across the 30 to have a legitimate shot at a field goal. Watch McCoy out of the backfield. Greer steps up in the pocket, throws, and incomplete. What a flag. Marcus Sims, the intended receiver. And Will Greer is down. Malcolm Roach was the one that hit Greer in the backfield, and he, as Greer threw, he was planted on his left leg, and Roach kind of jumped on his back and then dragged him backwards down, kind of over the top. Here's Roach on the outside, and he's going to be coming on the pressure. Back's trying to get him. That's Kennedy foul. McCoy. Defense number 32. Horse collar tackle on the quarterback after the pass. 15-yard penalty, first down. And see how he dragged him down there with the hand up there? Now, he's the horse collar is technically supposed to be inside the collar, and I thought he had the whole. This is the collar right there. You can see on the front of his jersey and pulls him down there, tries to let go late, but bent him back behind that leg. Greer. Let's hope Will Greer is. That's a good sign, walking off on his own. He's got a little hitch in his gait. 
Remember, Greer was injured in the Texas game last year, a broken finger. They call that a horse collar, but to my understanding, the horse collar does not apply to the quarterback in the pocket. So Jack Allison comes on to replace him. He's a Miami transfer. Played more than a quarter against Baylor last week. It was four for four for 43 yards and a touchdown. Boy, in these situations, Gus, you've got to have major stones to call a pass. So if I was Texas, I'd for sure expect a run play. And they run it with McCoy. Gets inside the 20. And that may take us to the end of the first quarter. Competitive quarter for Texas and West Virginia. Coming up, the second quarter from Austin, right after this. Fox College Football is sponsored by Volkswagen. And welcome back to the University of Texas. And we head to the second quarter, 14 to 10. Gus Johnson along with our partner, Joel Klatt. Interesting first quarter. Yeah, Carter. yeah, and the interesting part is that this officiating crew is really struggling. 11 penalties, but they were giant penalties. The last one on Texas, they called a horse caller uh, uh, against Malcolm Roach on a quarterback in the pocket. That's not, that doesn't exist in the rule book. You can't have a horse caller penalty against a quarterback in a pocket. On second and six, Jack Allison in the corner for David Sills. They've already thrown out a player. Excuse me, Greer is back in the game. Yes. They were worried about that left leg as he kind of got bent back. He's been playing great, but he's back in the ball game. West Virginia playing without their left tackle. Rodney could just, this officiating crew, threw him out of the game for what looked to be a harmless shove after a PAT. So that's kind of the story of the game right now. Third down and six. Here comes a blitz. They pick it up. Greer to set. throw and what a catch David Sills with his second touchdown of the first half and West Virginia goes up 16 14 that route was so good I mean the ball placement was sensational from Greer but Sills did such a great job. You got to do two things as a wide receiver. Create space and then make the catch. Watch him create the space right there. See how he just leans in and then leans back out. It's just a yard or two, but that's what allows Greer to have a spot to throw the ball. He goes up and he high points it and he's able to beat Josh Thompson to safety for a touchdown. So buckle up. We've had four lead changes already. Staley with the extra point. And the Mountaineers take a 17-14 lead. David Sills, what a first half. He's a first-team All-America, a Belitnikoff Award finalist in 2017 after he caught 60 balls for 980 and 18 touchdowns, which led the nation. Right now, Sills, four catches, 84 yards, and two touchdowns. Uh, the quarter just change but man this Texas defense struggle on there you look at Will Greer now passing Skyler Howard in West Virginia history just behind Geno Smith who had a sensational career has passed now Mark Bolger as well with the two TDs today now 61 in his career after coming in really late after the transfer from Florida so my goodness what a sensational deal that is and, and I gotta say this Texas defense for the second straight week struggling early in the game last year they gave up excuse me last week they gave up 260 yards and 17 points in the first quarter they've given up 17 now in what basically is one quarter and about 220 yards Staley sends it away. Little Jordan Humphrey, the deep man. And he'll let this go over his head and out of the end zone. Now coming up, Chick Kelly and UCLA take on the Oregon Ducks on Fox. Then over on FS1, USC battles Oregon State at 10 Eastern. Back to football tonight on Fox. Fox Sports 1 or watch it anywhere on the Fox Sports app as Chip Kelly returns to Eugene where he had so much success. And I'll tell you what, UCLA is playing better. They're getting better every single week. And I know no one's paying attention because they lost so many games early in the season. But that culture is starting to change. And I know people here in Austin will know exactly what that's all about. It took Tom Herman a little while to get it going. And 
He certainly has now. On first down, Ellinger running the football, cuts it inside, gets to the 30, still on the move. Sam Ellinger gets to the 40. A 13-yard gain, and I have a feeling that down the line, as Coach Herman continues to change this culture and implement his system, running the football is going to be so important at the University of Texas. No doubt about it, and that's what Tom Herman wants to do. He, he wants to do it in any way that he possibly can, whether it's an Ezekiel Elliott type or a Tim Tebow type. He wants to have somebody that can control the game from the backfield. First and 10 of the 38, Elliger to the sideline. And it's Colin Johnson. First time we've called his name today. And he is another terrific receiver from San Jose, California. I gotta tell you, man, these two guys are so tough to defend just because of their frame. You know, the, their matchup is just a nightmare for anybody that covers them. 6'6", six, 6'5", six, six, for little Jordan Humphrey and Colin Johnson. These corners just have a huge responsibility all day long. Second and four to 44. Literally huge. Pushes the pile forward. He won't get the first down. Gains two. Colin Johnson, the son of Johnny Johnson, who played 10 seasons with the Rams. And we talked to Colin yesterday. We asked him, do you think your dad could have covered you? He was like, nah. <laughs> Jerry Rice, maybe, but me, nah. No way, not me. Too little. <laughs> Third down and two at the 46. Oh, man. They could get away with a little bit more back then as a defensive back, you know? You know about that. Ellinger to throw. No, he decides to run and picks up the first down. Every great offense has a quarterback that has at least in college, as a quarterback that has the ability to at least convert with his feet on third down. Doesn't mean that he's got to be a great runner. And I don't think Sam's a great runner. He's physical and he's smart. He's elusive when he needs to be, like the run earlier on this series. And then right there, he sees an opening and he thinks to himself, hey, let's go convert a first down, and he does it. Gallagher to Watson. Tries to get downhill and does as he spins. At the 45 and getting back to your point. Sam Ellinger is not fast, but he's not slow. I think he's a really smooth runner, too. He smooth. uses his vision. That run earlier this series, he kind of just slid back, slid back again on those little two cutbacks, probably gained 10 extra yards just because of his feel and instincts for the game. Second and five at the 45. Complete heard the intended receiver, but he got whacked by Kenny Robinson. Gerard heard the former quarterback from Denton, and he gets up slowly. Can't make this pass because the safety was sitting there the entire time. And then Robinson yeah. does an, an just a fantastic job of not going high, going low, leading with his shoulder. Some hard hitting going on Texas West Virginia will step away and don't forget to check out breaking the huddle with my partner Joel Klatt on Facebook live Wednesday at 5 30 p.m. Eastern sponsored by Dr. Pepper as we head into November a lot to talk about in college football and Joel I'm sure you're gonna break it all down for the fans out there all the rankings we got everything that you need Third down and five to the 45. Texas three or four on third down conversions. Here's Ellinger. Quick strike. Caught. Colin Johnson turns on the afterburners. Colin Johnson. Touchdown, Texas. But a flag. This is going to come all the way back. They're going to get little Jordan Humphrey, it looked like. 
on a pick play. He tried to put his arms up. Watch here as here's a little Jordan Humphrey. He's going to be coming up the field. Pass interference. And he just kind of runs right into the defender the that was on Colin Johnson. 15 yards from the previous Of course, that ball is caught beyond the line of scrimmage. Down. I thought that was the correct call. It can't go and hit a defender like that. Even at the, you know, you could clearly see he was targeting him, and at the last second, he kind of did one of those like, oh, it's not, this is not intentional. But those pick plays are certainly what everyone tries to do, and particularly when you get your two best wide receivers on one side into the short side of the field, you get man coverage, you try to at least pick some or rub kind of a rub route there and there was just too much contact third down and 20 in the playbook for this situation. Gallagher. Delivers. Caught Duverday. Ran a great route. Devin Duverday on third and 20. Picked up about 17. Boy, and you get into that situation now. You cross the 50 and you create a short yardage situation. I think he's going to keep his offense on the field and go for it. We saw this a couple of times in the Red River game against Oklahoma after third and longs. They got themselves here and then converted. Texas is six of eight on fourth downs this year. They need three yards. Ellinger. Fires. Ellinger. And it's caught by. First down, Texas. A 26-yard gain. What a gutsy throw. Colin Johnson on the outside just runs a little fade route. And then as soon as he gets on top of the corner, Ellinger actually tries to throw that down and harder towards him. And he comes back to get it. That was such a good adjustment by Colin Johnson to not allow the defensive back to get back into position. He went over the top, went to the ball, and got a huge conversion. It looks like that shoulder's really starting to get loose for Sam Ellinger. On a third and 20, he got 17. Fourth to three, he got 26. First and 10 at the West Virginia 17. Ellinger drops it off. Watson can't hold on. Incomplete. That was very similar to last week. Gus Ellinger started five of his first 15 against Oklahoma State with that injured shoulder. But then after that, he was actually 17 of 27 in the second half and brought them back to the point where I certainly thought they were going to get it done. And save for a couple of mistakes on special teams, they probably would have won that game. So as he gets warmed up, he certainly gets more accurate and much better from the pocket. Second down and 10 of the 17-yard line for Texas. Sam Ellinger hands it off. Watson had a steam. First down. Watson still on the move. Watson gets inside the five. That running game for Texas can be black gold. Texas T. And at the end of this run, it was all about Will. Nice job avoiding David Long, but then just the willpower to punch it down there. They'll run it again with Watson. Touchdown, UT! And just like that, the Longhorns march it right back down the field to take a 20-17 lead. Boy, that right side of the offensive line just mashing West Virginia down. Watch all these big fellas, including the tight end Beck. The double team right there, and there's just a huge hole. And all the he's got to do is down. stick tight to the tight end. And as Beck mashes him down there, he's able to get into the end zone. Does he have control? Off the ground, hand down, ball over, touchdown, Texas. How about that series? It certainly did not look like they were going to have a shot at a touchdown when they're sitting there at third and 20. 
Duvernay runs an incredible route, goes in there and makes a catch in traffic that gives them a chance to convert on fourth down. Ellinger and Johnson hook up on a big play, and then from there it was all Trey Watson. Fifth lead change in 20 minutes. Cameron Dicker, the extra point. 21-17, 10-04 to go in the second. We've got a classic Big 12 offensive explosion going on in the Lone Star State. Fox College Football is presented by Volkswagen. Why settle for an SUV when you can have an SUVW? Aerial coverage is brought to you by our good neighbors at State Farm. How about this, folks? In 20 minutes, 421 yards and 38 points combined. And we're still in the first half. <laughs> That's the fifth straight drive. Texas 3, West Virginia 2, where a touchdown was scored. Texas running game starting to really find a little bit of rhythm as Will Greer gets ready to come back onto the field. Cameron Dicker sends it away. Tevin Bush, the deep man. This ball, fair caught at the five-yard line. Let's check out our winning duo sponsored by Volkswagen. Why settle for an SUV when you can have an SUVW? And that winning duo is Will Greer and David Sills. They are just tremendous. Four catches today for Sills. Already 84 yards and two touchdowns. Greer has been fantastic. 12 of 19 for 170 and two touchdowns. And guess what? They're going to need more because this thing's about to start getting crazy out here. And I got to tell you, this, these two, with how they're banged up, on the outside, they're going to have to have a monster day here in Austin. First down of the 25 for the Mountaineers. That away in the backfield. Greer scrambles. Sideline. And it's caught by Gary Jennings, but they say no catch. It is incomplete. Let's go downstairs to Jenny. Guys, quick update. A big blow to Texas's defense with Brecken Hager now officially out and Devontae Davis out for the game. Davis dealing with that shoulder. And for Brecken, it is that elbow. How will they respond? Those are two seniors for Texas, guys. All right, thank you very much, Jenny. They played without Davis for the first quarter last week against Oklahoma State. Second and 10 at the 25. Greer. Quick strike, Sills again, out of bounds. As he gets to the 31, Chris Boyd knocks him out of play. You know, the replacement for Davis is going to be Anthony Cook, number four for Texas. He's a freshman from Houston, enrolled back in January, and he actually played pretty well last week. They did most of their damage. Oklahoma State on the other side against Kobe Boyce. Greer surveys the defense, finds a soft spot for Tevin Bush, and Bush gains eight. And a first down for the Mountaineers. One of the things I respect and love most about Will Greer is that it doesn't matter if he's got banged up wide receivers. He never just looks at Sills. He's still spreading the ball around to any number of slot backs, wide receivers, running backs, and they use every part of their offense in order to create yardage. Last week against Baylor, 17 of 27, 353, three touchdowns, one rushing touchdown. From the 40. Greer surveys. Now to the sideline and incomplete. That was thrown high for Martel Petaway. They were trying to create a look where Sills was going to get an advantage on a little bit of a wheel route on that side. But you got to give a lot of credit to Chris Boyd, number two, the corner for Texas. He sat there, did not get deceived. Great discipline with his eyes. And that's why Greer had to throw it away. Second and 10 at the 40-yard line. And they'll hand it to Petaway. And Petaway, whoa, what a run. Fumbled it, but I believe he was down, and it's covered up by the Mountaineers, a nine-yard gain. Boy, what a collision there at the back end of that run. That's P.J. Locke, number 11. The ball didn't come out on that contact. It was when he was reaching right here. He was reaching for the ground. Clearly, ground caused that fumble. So, how about this collision? Oh. 
Good thing Petaway is a Detroit kid. Martin Luther King, high school. Third down and one of the 49. Quarterback sneak. They push him forward. It looks like he has it. Will Greer, 6'2", 223. How strong is his arm, Joel? I wouldn't say it's the strongest arm out there, but I think it's strong enough. You know, and he's put together. We're quite, talking about for, Sunday players. Yes, that's right. For the for the next level. And the thing about Will is he's very accurate with the football. In fact, he's third in college football right now in completion percentage. But he's also accurate with his ball placement. He can create big plays for his wide receivers. A lot of times when you see the big plays for West Virginia, it's because Greer is so accurate in terms of his ball placement, creating that yards after the catch. First down at midfield for West Virginia. Letty Brown checks in at tailback. Greer looks like a broken play. And incomplete. T.J. Simmons, closest man to the football. What a flag. And they had a lineman way down the field. That was a run play for sure. Kelby Wickline, number 72, was like eight yards down the field. An eligible player downfield, offense number 72, five-yard penalty, replay first down. That was not an RPO or a run pass. That was designed to be a handoff, but number four, Letty Brown, the freshman from Philadelphia, watches he goes the wrong way. See, Greer wants to hand this one off. I mean, one hand, he's like, here, you take it. But now what you're going to get here is down the field from the offensive line, and so when Greer throws it beyond the line of scrimmage, it's an easy call. First down at 15 at the 45. Petaway with a burst. Petaway, look at him go. And touchdown, Mountaineers. 55 yards for the junior from Detroit. What a great job by that offensive line. First of all, you're going to get a great block right here by the center and the right guard. They're going to open up the hole. And then watch as Petaway. He's going to get this seam. And then he's going to cut back to the left side. And Caden Stearns, the safety number seven, overruns the play, takes a bad angle, and Petaway winds up in the end zone. Sixth lead change in this game, and we're in the first half. And that's back-to-back -back weeks now that Caden Stearns, the safety, who is having a monster year as a true freshman, took bad angles, and they led to touchdowns. It happened last week against Oklahoma State, and now Stearns takes a poor angle on Petaway, and Petaway has proven, Gus, he's just too strong. So if you take him on the side, he's going to break that tackle. you got to be head up with him he's 212 pounds he's low to the ground he's only 5'9 and he's run through those those arm tackles a couple of times and there is an injured longhorn Marquez Bimage number 42 I believe is the injured player played quite a bit of football for a backup 20 career games last year he was mostly a special teams player but now with the injuries up front Chris Nelson the nose tackle he came into this game is kind of questionable Brecken Hager has left now on that defensive line and Bimage is now having to play and they're holding his left arm so this front seven for Texas is getting more and more thin with each series of football, and that's a huge concern for Tom Herman on that sideline. Next man up. You're going to get a, a few true freshmen that are going to start to get a lot of run right now. Moro Ojimo from Katy, Texas, and Keandre Coburn, number 99 from Houston. These are two guys that they expected to play today anyways. They've wanted to keep them under the four-game threshold to retain their red shirt, but Coburn in particular, this dude was an All-American because he's one of the highly rec recruited players of last year's class, and he's going to be asked now to, I think, play a lot more football than he expected to. Staley, extra point, good. Petaway with the longest run of his career, 55 yards for a touchdown. 24-21, West Virginia. 
Thank you very much. 24 to 21, our score here in Austin, Texas, West Virginia, reclaiming the lead. As Evan Stanley will send it away, little Jordan Humphrey, the deep man for the Longhorns. And little Jordan will take a knee. Let's go to Sam Farber for a game break. Number five, Michigan hosting number 14, Penn State Wolverines quarterback Shea Patterson has already run for one score today. This time he'll use his arm 23 yards to Donovan Peoples Jones, both feet down. That's a score at any level. Michigan leading 14 nothing with under a minute to play in the half. Back to Austin and Gus and Joel. All right. Thank you very much, Sam. You got to give Jim Harbaugh and the Wolverines a lot of credit coming into this week, ranked fifth in the nation with only one loss to fourth ranked Notre Dame. Here's a handoff as Texas runs it. Ingram. Now, while they're playing defense in the Big Ten, this is what we're seeing in the Big 12. <laughs> it's been just a shootout back and forth. The broken coverage for Sills down the field, then the broken coverage for Humphrey down the field. I thought that was a terrific route by Seals. Sills there, he gets in the end zone. Watson, after a big third down uh, conversion and a fourth down conversion, they find the end zone and then Petaway. That's that Detroit love, right? That's, That's right. that tough running from, from Detroit, Michigan, man. He, he lowers those pads, and arm tackles aren't going to cut it against Pedro. Here's the option. Elliger with the pitch to Ingram, and nothing doing. Great job. Giovanni Stewart smelled it out and made the play. Well, it becomes like this. When you start getting into a game like this, it becomes like tennis, Gus. It's about a broken serve. Can you get off the field one time? Can you force a kick? So that's when all of a sudden, maybe a nondescript second quarter, 630 left, third down becomes a really big play. And now an opportunity for West Virginia to get the ball right back for their offense. Gallagher faced with a third and 10 at his own 25. Looks like they want to come here from the corner. Yep, here they come. Ellinger with time. Ellinger almost intercepted, but a flag on the play. Duvernay, the intended receiver, Keith Washington, and Josh Norwood in the vicinity. Prior to the pass, holding defense number six, 10 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. Drayvon Askew Henry. Oh, he's the one in the slot right here. And there's the hold outside of the pads, holds him absolutely, no doubt about it. Excellent call there away from the play, but before the pass was even thrown and during the pass, Trayvon Askew Henry has played more snaps for West Virginia than any player in history commits the foul. First down to the 35. Helliger delivers to Beck on the sideline. He turns it up and crosses the 40-yard line. Nice little move by Beck there. He got away from Long, and he picked up, what, five, six extra yards and creates a second down where now you can maybe use those big wide receivers on the outside. These second and short opportunities, maybe you take a shot. Second and four. There's Colin Johnson. He's at the bottom of your screen. Little Jordan Humphrey. He's in the slot at the top. And they'll run it with Ingram. Ingram bounces it outside and picks up a first. That's why those penalties are so big. Drayvon Askew Henry, he has a penalty that gives Texas a first down, and now all of a sudden the offense finds some rhythm. They find Beck on the outside, Ingram gets a first down, and then it feels like Texas is in business. First down to the 46. in a tight window to little Jordan Humphrey. Two Mountaineers right on his back. Josh Norwood came crashing from the outside. Number four, he's going to be the one coming from behind Humphrey. And then from the interior, that was Giovanni Stewart, number nine, who's coming from his linebacker spot. Second down and four after the six-yard gain. Ellinger again with a completion. This time it's Duvernay. And Duvernay with a first down. 
Ellinger's rhythm right now is outstanding. The ball's out of his hand. It's right on the break for the wide receiver. It's in the correct spot. His ball placement has been terrific. That one right on the outside shoulder for DuVernay so he can spin out to the outside. First and 10 at the 42. Watches, he gets on top of the linebacker, but then see how he just kind of settles down right there and gives him the whole shot. He doesn't run into the safety, and then Ellinger stops him as well with the ball placement. That's rhythm, man. I love it. I love watching this type of a passing game. Two guys on the same page getting out there, getting it done. Will Jordan, five catches, 75 yards, and a touchdown. First down at the West Virginia 23. Humphrey in motion. Ellinger sprints out, steps up and goes down for the first time in this game. David Long with the sack. Boy, Long plays it perfectly. He's going to come up right here, and then he's going to get back onto the outside and force Ellinger to get back up into the pocket. This move right there, now the rush can get to him, and there's where it comes from the inside. So David Long doing a heck of a job, and then it gets cleaned up in there. Is that 55? Dante Stills? David Long with his fifth sack of the season. He's a Buckus Award semifinalist, tied for ninth in the country in tackles for losses. Second and 19 at the 32. Sam Ellinger. And he's got a receiver, Watson. First down and more. Watson touchdown, Texas. 32 yards. What a game. Seventh lead change of the first half. And we still have an eternity to play. Two minutes and 40 seconds. I want you to watch this. They're running a blitz, and so it's man coverage. This linebacker is going to be responsible for Watson. As Watson heads out of the backfield, that's the man coverage. That's way too far. Misaligned. Watson makes some pay. Giovanni Stewart can never cover up and close down that gap, and Watson takes it in for a touchdown. 2.40 to go in the second quarter. Dicker with the extra point, and Texas takes a 28-24 lead. An offensive explosion in Austin. UT, WVU going head-to-head. -head. Fox College Football is presented by Volkswagen. Why settle for an SUV when you can have an SUVW? And is sponsored by State Farm, here to help life go right. Postcards from Fansville, sponsored by Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. And I tell you what, both these teams have given the fans in attendance a lot to cheer about. <laughs> hey, that's the truth. Classic Big 12 action going up and down the field. There's just, there's no conservative football in this conflict. You know, you can, I, I don't buy that they don't play quality defense because when you go to the bowl season, the Big 12 generally does such a nice job defensively against the other conferences. And even in the non-conference, they do a nice job as well. I know it's not quite the dominant defense that you see elsewhere. But man, it, sometimes it boils down to the fact that these offenses, man, they just go. And fair caught at the five. Tomorrow, it's a... Fox NFL doubleheader starting with Matt Ryan and the Falcons taking on Adrian Peterson and the Redskins. And then it's America's Game of the Week as Todd Gurley and the undefeated Rams battle Drew Brees and the Saints who have only one loss coming to Fitz Magic in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers earlier this season. It's all on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Check local listings. You think those fans down in New Orleans won't be ready to go? Oh, they're going to be ready. That's going to be a great game. Yes, it will. Can't wait for that one. First and 10 of the 25 for the Mountaineers. Plenty of time for them, 240. And they don't get the playoff in time. Play game, offense, five-yard penalty. 
first down. We've seen this so much this year. Texas has six false starts this year on the first play of their drive, and the deal is, is that they they uh, delay a games. Excuse me. They they change the rule where the 40-second clock just starts after the kick. Very similar to any other play. Longhorn short and blitz right now. Here they come. They hand it off. McCoy and McCoy dragged down from behind. But he looked to gain the first down. Anthony Wheeler with the tackle. Well, this defensive line, they're already thin, and they are just getting run through right now. That, that depth is being affected, and West Virginia is pounding away with that run game. Every time they hand it off, there seem to be those big holes in the front. They're not getting touched for five, six, seven, eight, nine yards at a time. Remember, they're missing their starting left tackle. Yatni just was ejected from the game. First and 10 of the 35. Greer picks it up and just wings it out of bounds. The snap just never got back to him. They've gone to a backup center now, Jacob Buccagrossi, sophomore from Pittsburgh, they've struggled at center and right guard. That's why you see kind of a rotation. You've seen Matt Jones in there. He didn't snap it, and they had a false start. Now, Bucciagrossi, he snaps it along the ground. And a handoff to McCoy. And McCoy is drilled at the line of scrimmage. And a flag thrown behind the play. E.J. E. Foster with the tackle. Defense number 94, a 10 yard penalty results in a first down. Wow. Gerald Wilbon is going to get called for a hold here against the center. Well, here it is. I guess by that look, Bucciagrossi is trying to get to the linebacker, but man, that just looks like a regular old run play to me. That was the 16th combined penalty in the first half. The late handoff, McCoy skipping through the hole. He'll get inside Texas territory. I just, I just, I just don't understand how you call that, that foul. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but my goodness. Again, and this time will be tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Ominahu. West Virginia will take a timeout. 126 to go in the first half. Back to Austin after this. Anna and Mark are heading into retirement and a little nervous. But not so much about what market volatility may do to their retirement savings. That's because they have a shield annuity from Bright House Financial, which allows them to take advantage of growth opportunities in up markets while maintaining a level of protection in down markets. So they can focus on new things like exotic snacks. Talk with your advisor about shield annuities from Bright House Financial, established by MetLife. Fox College Football is sponsored by Volkswagen. And we've got a hot one here in Austin, 28-24, Texas leading West Virginia in the first half. Great crowd, great day in the Lone Star State. Third down and three at the 48 for Will Greer. And the West Virginia offense. Greer and knocked away. Great job by Chris Boyd, but another flag. Giovanni Haskins, the intended receiver. They were wrestling on that far side. They were trying to run a little bit of a kind of a hitch route that then would come back to the quarterback. 
Pass interference. Defense number two. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Well, there's Boyd number two. And see the inside receiver. He's going to go on the outside. Now he's going to try to come back. Boyd. Looked like great coverage. Looks like he may have had his right arm on his hip. I guess so. I guess so. So first down for West Virginia at the Texas 44. Greer sets up in the pocket. Wants to go deep in trouble. Breaks a tackle. And Greer will just tiptoe out of bounds as he crosses the line. Well, with two timeouts, he's not concerned about the clock right now here at a minute 12. But it does get out of bounds. Save one of those timeouts there. I mean, at this point, you're probably trying to go past the sticks, but again, it's it's not a must. The entire offense is at his disposal here. Second and nine. Greer rifles one to the far side to TJ Simmons. Chris Boyd drives him hard. Out of bounds. Now they're going to have to either go quick or get a timeout. They're going to try to go quick here for a conversion. Third down at six. West Virginia moving. And they will be penalized. Again, and they've gone back now in the middle of the series. Now Matt Jones is back in at center. And it looked like he just didn't snap the ball again. Yep, all the offensive linemen back up into their into their stance and noise. No, and it. noise may be a factor. Yeah, but Remember, again, they were expecting the largest crowd to watch a Texas game here at Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium today. Ball start. Probably a runoff too. Five-yard penalty. Replay third down. Texas wanted the 10-second runoff. West Virginia has taken a timeout to avoid that runoff. It'll be 30 seconds in length. One timeout remaining for the Mountaineers. 49 seconds to play in the And don't forget, coming up, the State Farm Halftime Show with Rob and the guys. Michigan taking on Pitt State. SEC title on the line in the East and a wild finish in Waco. Baylor, Oklahoma State, third down and 11. At the 45 for Greer and the Mountaineers. Here's Greer, underneath, has a receiver in first down, Giovanni Haskins, the tight end. He gains 11. He saw the pressure Greer did, dumped it into the weak part where they vacated a zone and was able to get a conversion. West Virginia with one timeout left. First down, Greer looking in the end zone. Now underneath as he checks it down to Haskins. They need to take their timeout there. Yep, absolutely. 23 ticks left. And Greer's doing a nice job of just taking what they give. Remember, points here would be a huge positive for West Virginia right at the end of the half. Would love a touchdown, but you don't want to force the ball into the back end of the defense. And Texas has done a nice job with their safeties. The corners are doing a nice job in coverage, not allowing any space down the field. And so Greer has had to operate in that intermediate and short zone here during this series, which has forced him to be patient and them to have to burn some of these timeouts. So you would think that when Dana Holgerson sends his offense back on the field, you have to look for number 13. You would think, and I think you have you have to have two play calls ready. And you have to understand that you need to get a conversion and either kill the clock after that once they start the clock when they get the chain set or you've got to take another shot and at that point Will Greer has to know that that ball either has to go past the, the first down marker if they're still out there or to the edge because he's got no ability to stop the clock unless he gets it to the edge or past the first down marker so that's what the conversation is in the huddle two play calls you got to get the conversion and then get up there and then understand the situation from that point on 
Second down and three at the 27. West Virginia out of timeouts. There's Sills. Got the wind at their back, so they're in field goal range. Can't take a sack. Here's Greer. Off his back foot. And incomplete. With 19 seconds to go. That'll make it third and three at the 27. Yeah, Texas did a great job there of bringing a little pressure so that Greer couldn't hold the ball in the pocket and get the ball down the field. They were trying to work to Sills once again. He's the target they want. He's going to be at the bottom of your screen working against a freshman, Anthony Cook, number four. Third and three. Greer rifles it and out of bounds. That brings up fourth down. Gary Jennings, the intended receiver, but Anthony Cook was right in his hip pocket. Good coverage there, using the sideline to his advantage, forcing the wide receiver over there too close to the sideline. Now you get a field goal opportunity. So Evan Staley, he's made a 45-yarder today. This one will be from 44 yards away. Remember, his career long is 49 against Kansas. Redshirt sophomore. Billy Kenny is the holder. Looks like Texas took a timeout. And it's going to come back Prior to Hunter because I think he missed it. Timeout, Texas. Oh, that's when, oh, no, that's when you. He, he missed that right. But Tom Herman had taken a timeout. Herman, Herman trying to ice him, but he actually warmed him up in a sense, giving him a, a mulligan here. If I was a special teams coach for West Virginia, I would tell Staley, hit it exactly the same, because like playing golf, partner, and you know this, what's the tendency? To overcorrect. He misses one right. The tendency can be to overcorrect to the left. You got to make sure that Staley just hits this the same he always does. Just say, hey, same routine. Hit it like you always do. Don't overcorrect. If he overcorrects, most likely he'll hook it from 44 yards away. Staley, perfect. 44-yard field goal. For Evan Staley. And West Virginia pulls to within one with nine seconds remaining. Two minute situation color. 28 27, Texas. West Virginia cheerleaders are going to get their workout in today. You know, this is the week of the anniversary of Mahomes and Mayfield throwing for like. Millions of yards in the right. most 700 ago. plus yards. It was 1,700 yards in that ball game. Now, what we've got between these two teams is 600 yards, seven lead changes. No turnovers. No turnovers and 18 penalties. And 55 points. Staley to kick it off to Little Jordan. Line drive. And out of bounds. Well, that, that poses a little bit of an interesting deal now. Texas has three, has two Illegal timeouts kick out remaining. Of bounds on a kicking team. Ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. Because of the size of the targets that Texas has from the 35, I saw earlier in warm-ups, and the wind has subsided just a bit since warm-ups, but Cameron Dicker hit a 52-yarder from the right hash in warm-ups. He, so he had a big field goal against Oklahoma, didn't he? I would think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Legend status. They would need to get to around the 35 for him to attempt that field goal. Hallinger. Underneath. And incomplete with a second remaining. Daniel Young couldn't hold on. Hallinger. Has had a great first half, 13 of 20, 189 yards passing. He's thrown two touchdowns, no interceptions. And he's also rushed for a touchdown. And he will hand it off to Young, and that will take us to the end of the first half. 
And what a first half it was. 614 yards of offense, seven lead changes, 18 penalties, no turnovers. Texas heads into the locker room up by a penny. Coming up, we'll send you to Rob Stone in L.A. When you put it like that, like that, like that, like that, you know. You think it's got it like that when I act like that, all right. Yeah. You know what had the bad track, bad track, I gon' fail. Right. Yeah. You right. You right, you right, you right, yeah. When you put it like that, like that, like that, like that, you right. Yeah. You think it's picky, got it like that. Welcome back to Austin, and what a first half we have had. Fox College Football is sponsored by Volkswagen 28-27, Texas on top of West Virginia. Gus Johnson, along with my partner, Joel Clapp, partner, over 600 yards of total offense, seven touchdowns, 18 penalties. Yes. No turnovers. I mean, I got to tell you, like, this, this is the type of game that if you're a quarterback, you dream of, right? Like, you want to get thrown into the fire, and these two quarterbacks are playing so well right now, and they are our Duracell most trusted players. Sam Ellinger was terrific. He got to go with that jump ball kind of to little Jordan Humphrey. He took one into the end zone. He's 13 of 20 for 189 and two touchdowns. Then you've got Will Greer. He found Sills down the seam. He was pounding his chest and rightly so. He's 17 of 29 for 206 and two scores. They have been sensational. These defenses, they better figure something out because these quarterbacks are going through them fast today. Injuries, ejections playing a major role in this game. Huge, in particular on that Texas side, on that defensive side, they've got a few starters at uh, out of this ball game. And then the left tackle for West Virginia was disqualified. Yeah, he well. could just. Yep. Let's take a look at our Geico first half stats. And there was a lot of them. 610, 14, 614 total yards. You got three plays for West Virginia of over 20 yards, four explosive plays for Texas. They were both good on third downs, but the penalties is where this thing got out of hand. So some of them, I think, probably should have stayed in the official's pocket. Other ones were absolutely penalties, so we'll have to adjust from here. So Texas will get the ball to start the second half. Little Jordan is the deep man. Uh, Staley sends it away. And this one will not be returned. Let's check in with Jenny Taft. Well, the word from Dana Holgerson coming back out here, he said he reminded the guys that this is a 0-0 game. I don't really care if we're up by one or down by one. We have so much more to do in the second half. He reminded them we should have more in the tank because we had more days to rest and prepare for this one. As for Coach Sherman, I asked him about those 600 yards of offense between these two teams. He says this one is the recipe for a shootout. The injuries defensively, it's a next man up mentality. We have to be ready to respond in any way. All right, thank you very much, Jenny. So Sam Ellinger and the Texas offense back on the field. Ellinger running this one, cuts it inside, and he's close to a first down. This one has an eerie, familiar taste, you know, especially for us. We were here back in 2012. Texas led 28-27 at half. West Virginia ended up winning that ball game, 48-45. Second down and one, and the Longhorns will pick up the first down with Trey Watson. David Long with the tackle. So in that first half, for Texas, Ellinger was 13 of 20, 189, two touchdowns, no interceptions. He was sacked once. First down at the 36. Andrew Beck in motion. Looking, goes through his progressions. Now scampers out of the pocket and just dumps it out of bounds. Well, they're trying to max protect there and send only three receivers out on the route. West Virginia, great coverage down the field. There was nowhere to go with this ball. They were expecting a blitz, and then West Virginia backed out of it. That's when you kind of guess as a play caller, and it goes wrong. Ellinger had to burn that ball after he left the pocket. Nowhere to throw it down the field. Second and 10 at the 36. Second 
him down over the middle, and it's caught by Lil Jordan. Lil Jordan Humphrey, another first down for UT. And that's what he talked about yesterday in our meeting. He loves to throw it to Lil Jordan over the middle. That's right. That's where he makes all the money. Or he will make all the money. And it's a lot of the things that we talk about as far as catch radius. Because you don't have to be perfect with the ball to little Jordan Humphrey. You can throw it kind of anywhere and he can get it and over the middle. That is a, a huge advantage for a quarterback. A gain of 11, first and 10 at the 47. Ellinger will run it this time with Trey Watson. And Watson gets to midfield. Watson has been a nice addition transferring from Cal in that running backs room. And he had a productive time at Cal. He was a graduate transfer. 2,400 all-purpose yards at Cal. 1,300 rushing yards. So when he came in here, he had some confidence. Mature guy. And he's broken out in this game. He's been terrific for them here since about the second quarter on. Caught a touchdown in the first half. Second and seven at midfield. Checking going on for Texas. They get the playoff and Watson straight ahead. Some power running, five yard gain. So that should make it third and two. Nice shot by that offensive line. Their most dominant and oldest offensive lineman, number 77, Patrick Vahe, senior, 325 pounds, opened up a big hole there. Great block. Early in the run. season, coming off that Maryland game. Uh, the offensive line criticized for not moving people. It's been a different story, though. Third and two at the 45. Let's see if they can move them this time. Ellinger sprints out, shovel pass. Watson turns it up and gets the first. Dante Stills with the stop, but a first down, UT. Elijah Rodriguez, watch this. He's going to come and he's going to pull around. He's going to meet Shea Morgan, or excuse me, Shea Campbell, the linebacker here right there. That's the key block. Watson then turns it back and is able to get the conversion and move the chains. Nice shot by Watson, but also a great block there by Elijah Rodriguez. On third and two, Longhorns get three. First down at the 42. Ellinger, play fit. Ellinger goes through his progressions over the middle. Lil Jordan cuts it inside, poked away and out of bounds. Texas catches a break. That ball poked away from behind. And I believe it may have been Keith Washington with the punch. Number three, Avery actually comes up. There's Toyas Avery, and he goes ahead and punches it out. And you are absolutely right, partner. You talk about dodging a bullet. Now, since that ball was fumbled forward, it goes back to the spot it was punched out. That's why it's all the way back here about the 14-yard line. A 28-yard game, first and 10. Ellinger over the middle. Incomplete Beck. That's the second time he's missed the exact same pass. Yeah, but this time it wasn't Ellinger. Beck wasn't ready for it. Earlier in the game, Ellinger missed him long. This time, Beck didn't get his head turned around. This hits him basically right in the face mask. Here's Beck. He's just going to take up right down the field. And as he's wide open, ball's right there. That's a touchdown. Oh, he just got a little excited. Didn't get his hands up. Gallagher runs it. Watson. And he'll get inside the West Virginia 10-yard line. What's going on at the line of scrimmage? And we see this. We saw this last year with Ohio State. And JT Barrett, when they get to the line of scrimmage, and you talked about all those checks, what is he looking for? Well, it's it's not necessarily Sam as much as the sidelines. And upstairs, Tim Beck, the offensive coordinator, he's calling the plays from there. So they get up to their offensive formation, and then they make a false clap. Okay, so they clap once, and they're just waiting to see if West Virginia moves, and then they'll signal another play in. That's a check just from Sam right there. He did not look to the sideline. This is his check. Empty backfield for Ellinger. Ellinger underneath, and it's caught by Colin Johnson. Johnson down deep in West Virginia territory. Is he going to have enough for a first down there? Here he's going to just get on a little bit of a slant. Here he comes right to the inside. Good ball by Ellinger. He needed to get to the four-yard line. They called him short. Fourth down and one then. Ellinger runs it, looking for the first, and he has it. 
His helmet comes off. So he may have to go to the sideline for one play. And he will. And now Bouchelle's going to have to find his helmet. Bouchelle was in a baseball cap. He's running on the sideline right now. There he is. He's going to have to grab his helmet and get all the way out there. And he better hurry because they're already down to 24 now. 25, 24 on the play clock because Ellinger had to come out. Remember, the only time Sam Ellinger could stay in the game is if it was a penalty that knocked his helmet off like a face mask. But it comes off in the normal course. He's got to sit out of play. Texas does not want to use a timeout if they can help it. And it looks like they will use one. Well, no, they're going to measure on that other side because they're... I thought he got it. I was with you. I thought he got it by at least half yard. That spot was... Oh, and he did, goodness. By the nose of the football. <laughs> it was so close. Wow. So Shea Bouchelle has played in just one game this season against Baylor after Sam Ellinger left with a shoulder injury. And here's that last carry, and Ellinger, you can see that as soon as his butt hits the ground, it looked like he was kind of vertical right there with the ball. Well, I think they're going to take a further look at this because the way that he spun... Remember, the spot of the ball is where the ball is at when that when his backside hits the ground. Sam Elliger with a little blood coming from the lip. It's been that kind of day. It's been a fight between these two teams. Great first half. Just love this kid and his competitiveness. Yesterday, Coach Herman, we asked him about his quarterback, how he liked his quarterback. He said, well, I don't know if you like a guy that's incredibly smart that eats nails for breakfast. <laughs> that's, that's certainly Sam. Okay, so you can make the argument here that that's about where he's down, right where his, and that his shin is down. And I think you can make the argument in replay that that ball should have been spotted short of the four yard line. There's also another element of this, and that is that as soon as his helmet starts coming off, it doesn't matter if a body part is down, the play is dead. And so that's also where they'll be looking at it. And judging based on that last replay, if you go back to immediately when that helmet starts to come off, I think you can make an argument that they're going to adjust this spot. They and cancel I, the and first I don't down? Think they might, I don't think they'll get it. That would be first down the other way. Remember, this is a fourth down play. So we're going to try to freeze it right when the helmet starts coming off, which is right about there. Well, you can't see it, though, can you? Well, on the on from straight back, you can see it from the end zone on the other side. Okay, so when it's completely off or he's down, there he's down right there. Dean Blandino is with us. Dean, what do you see? Yeah, I'm looking at that right leg. Remember, the helmet would have to be completely off to kill the play. Looks like the right shin side of the calf is down. And, and I, I'm with Joel. I think you can make a strong case that that ball did not make it to the four-yard line. And remember, it had to make basically exactly where they spotted it because they've already measured and know that it's a first down by about two inches, just the nose of the football. So if they adjust this at all, they will know that it is not a first down, and it will be then a first down for West Virginia going the opposite way. And I can still hear Mac Brown yelling from the sideline. Brad Van Vark's name. <laughs> and he did it a lot. <laughs> Taking a long look at this. Dean, you're still with us. I'm still with you. I'm waiting like everybody else with bated breath. I think I think Dean and I have kind of made our call here. I think this is short of the line to gain. Fans not happy with the length of this review. David Ames is the replay official. After reviewing the play, the runner's helmet came off prior to making the line into game. 
The ball is dead immediately at that point. Therefore, it will be first down West Virginia. Wow, big stand for the Mountaineers, and they can't believe it in Austin. How about that stand? In a game in which it's been offense, 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 it's the defense for the Mountaineers that come up with a huge stand here. Remember, 9.53 of the third. West Virginia holds back after this. Fox College football presented by Volkswagen is sponsored by Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. And by Wendy's Dollar Fries, get any size you want for a limited time at participating Wendy's. Aerial coverage is brought to you by our good neighbors at State Farm. West Virginia takes over deep in their own territory at the five-yard line, first down. The defense coming up big, denying Texas that first down. Only the third stop of the game. Two punts in the first half, and that fourth down stop from West Virginia. From the five, and they'll hand it off. McCoy, and McCoy ridden down by Chris Nelson. Nelson has had a really solid game in the middle for the Longhorns. And he was just a game-time decision. We thought that Chris Nelson wouldn't be able to play. He reacted really favorably to some of the treatment that they gave him. He's a team captain this year. He's a senior. And he has played pretty well up front. But they're going to need to continue to play well. Right now, West Virginia is running the ball at will, averaging over nine yards per carry on the ground. Second and seven. Greer looking. Greer underneath and a first down. Marcus Sims. And Sims rolling around. How about the protection from this West Virginia offensive line? This is without their starting left tackle. Now you've got Kelby Wickline, number 72, in there doing a nice job. Kennedy McCoy, the running back, with a great block. And it allowed Greer to get to the third man in the progression. Comes all the way back to the left and finds that completion. That's what Sims has been struggling with is that ankle. And we saw him get up kind of hobbling on that foot. Nine-yard gain, first down Mountaineers at the 17. They swing it out. Devin Bush. Bush still on the move. And another first down for West Virginia. Caden Stearns, the safety with the tackle. A 14-yard pickup. And it was the tackle that didn't happen that was the biggest part of the play. P.J. Locke, number 11, was in the backfield, ready to have a tackle for loss. Commits himself too early. And just a nice little move right there from Tevin Bush to get around and gain positive yards. Missed tackles will kill you as a defense. And we've seen far too many from that Longhorn defense today. First down, WVU at the 31. McCoy. Another big hole. West Virginia continues to gash this Texas defense on the ground. Jeffrey McCullough with the tackle. Boy, big yardage. Not getting touched for five, six yards in a pop. He gained six that time. Second and four. McCoy again. And this time, he won't have enough for the first down. Anthony Wheeler, Wheeler in the middle with the tackle. Third down and two. Well, here's the opportunity that you need as a defense to get yourself potentially off the field. West Virginia is six of nine on third down today. Bush in motion again. But give it to him the other way. No, yes, and Texas was ready. Wow, what a great defensive play as Josh Thompson and Taquan Graham combined on the tackle. And Taquan Graham does a great job. He's the defensive end right here. Watch how he just kind of slow plays it down the line, and then he's right there. Doesn't make the play, but Bush has to just bubble around him just enough where he can't get the edge and go north and south for the conversion. And then there's his buddy. He gets some help by Josh Thompson, the safety, coming up for the play. So Billy Kenny will punt from the 21. Deshaun Jamison is the deep man. Jamison from the 17. Jamison with a lane. Jamison with a burst and gets all the way up to the 46. A 47-yard punt and a 28-yard return. 
Jean Mahal with the tackle on special teams, but Texas will start this series in good shape. Fox College Football presented by Volkswagen is sponsored by Progressive Insurance, handing off big savings to you. 28-27, we start the second half. Both defenses making great stands. How about that? And now Texas gets great field position because of that stand and a nice return. And there you see the leaders, Sam Ellinger, having a nice day. Trey Watson, nice day on the ground. And little Jordan Humphrey with 114 yards so far catching the football. He has been terrific over the middle for Sam Ellinger. And Ellinger told us that throwing a little Jordan over the middle is like throw it to a basketball player who's posting up. Yeah, man, just dump it in there, right? Just. And here's the handoff. Ingram and Ingram knock backwards. Shea Campbell. Let's check in with Greg Wolf in Los Angeles. All right, Gus, thanks. We go to Ann Arbor. Things falling apart for Penn State. Trace McSorley battling a knee injury. So back up Tommy Stevens in for this drive was not what James Franklin was hoping for. Brandon Watson picks off the errant pass. He goes 62 yards for the score. Number five, Michigan on top 28 to nothing. Fourth quarter. Gus, Joel, back to you. Whoa. All right. Wolverines are serious. Ellinger rifles one. And it's Colin Johnson with the catch. Looks like he kept both, well, kept a foot in bounds. And he picks up 15. He's got great body control for a big man on the edges. Really fluid mover at 6'6", 220 pounds, good hands. He's great in the 50-50 situation down the field, and that's what he loves. When he, when he, we ask him, what's your favorite thing to do? Go down the field. I want to go down the field and get in that situation. Ingram. Colin Johnson said during the offseason, he worked on his strength. He improved his squat to over 400 pounds. His bench is in the 340 range. Remember, he's got some long arms, so at 6'6", got some heavy weight. And, and admittedly, he said he had some work to do in the offseason. He had a hamstring injury kind of at the end of the spring, and so they had to work around that hamstring injury, but he was able to do that, got much stronger and much more explosive. Second and five at the 37. Ingram. West Virginia says nothing doing, not on this side, as David Long came up and made the tackle. But you can't squander that good field position, and Texas has had it most of the day. They've started their average field position at their own 37 as compared to the West Virginia offense starting at their own 21. So a big conversion here for Texas to try to stay on the field. Third down and five. This is normally Little Jordan territory. He's the slot receiver. Closest to the right guard. Watch out for a slant here. Ellinger rolls out. Ellinger just throws it down the field. Twice now, Ellinger has been in the back of the pocket or rolling out or backpedaling, and he doesn't have a prayer. And so what does he do? He throws it to the guy that can get it done. Lil Jordan Humphrey down the field over Kenny Robinson. Ellinger took the hit, but he did exactly what he needed to do, put the ball high for Humphrey. If Shaka Smart needs a rebounder, number 84 <laughs> can help him out. Duvernay, close to a touchdown. That ball marked inside the one. And he just reached out. He just didn't quite have time. He got his left foot down, tried to extend that ball over the pylon, but I think he just ran out of real estate there. Yeah, just short of the pylon as he was heading out. Gallagher trying to run it. And West Virginia this time strings that play out nicely. And they'll lose about three to four yards on the play. Kenny Robinson. Knocks him out of bounds around the five. A heck of a play there from Kenny Robinson. He was actually playing on the back side of that play. He was the backside safety and ran all the way across the formation, closed on Ellinger and knocked him out and back. A loss of four, third down and goal at the five. Daniel Young in the backfield. Two 
big receivers at the top of your screen. And Elliger calls a timeout. Texas, third down and goal at the five. Will they go for little Jordan again? Let's see. Johnson at the bottom of your screen. Ellinger reverses his field. Ellinger looking. Incomplete. Tim Beck was in the back of the end zone. And Texas will settle for a field goal attempt. And Keontae Ingram had a little space out there on the outside as Ellinger ran out there and that's just too hard to complete he's running full speed to his left and he's got to try to get his body torqued all the way around to potentially complete that ball that is just an impossible throw and it just sails a little too high for Ingram so that brings on Cameron Dicker into attempt a 22 yarder and it's good 2.55 to go in the third. Texas with a 31-27 lead over West Virginia. Darrell K. Royal, Texas Memorial Stadium, opened 94 years ago this week. Over the years, it has gone through multiple renovations, the most recent coming in 2009. It is a seating capacity of 100,119, making it the ninth largest stadium in the world. And there's the statue of Coach Royal who won national championships in 1963, 1969, and 1970. The only other national championship won by the Longhorns was in 2005 under Coach Mack Brown, our good friend. And this ball fielded at the 10-yard line by Tevin Bush. And Bush with some nice running, and he'll get to the 31. Let's check in with Greg Wolf. Gus, thank you. Imagine it's getting very quiet right now at the Swamp. Drew Locke on a quick slant. He finds Emmanuel Hall, four-yard touchdown. The Missouri Tigers lead number 11 Florida in Gainesville, 35-17, nearing the end of the third quarter. Gus, Joel, back to you. I just hope the college football playoff committee is actually watching Kentucky and Florida this week. Maybe they'll rank them properly now. Wow. And what do you mean by that? They were overrated by a mile in this week's poll as we look at the offensive leaders for West Virginia. David Stills had a huge second quarter. Gus, but, Gus, but he's been quiet since. Haven't heard of David Stills from him in the last couple series. Here's Petaway, who had a 55-yard touchdown in the first half. Picks up a first down, a gain of 11. So you see the adjustments being made by the Texas defense. Well, the Texas defense is, is putting help over the top of Sills right now. But what that is allowing West Virginia to do is run the football so successfully. Right now, they're making an adjustment. Sills has one-on-one -on -one coverage. Rear in the flats. Petaway. And Petaway out of bounds at the 45. It's a constant deal. Yeah, are the safeties going to help defend the run, or are they going to help defend the pass? And when you've got this type of offense right now that is being so effective running the football, and you've got a weapon on the outside like David Sills, who's an All-American caliber guy, the Litnikoff Award caliber guy, you know, you, you have to toy with that as a defensive coordinator. And right now, Todd Orlando is trying to find the balance between stopping the run and giving help over the top. Second and six at the 46. Greer. Guns one, and it's caught. Marcus Sims, what a run after the catch, breaking tackle after tackle, and he's finally taken down at the Texas 30 by P.J. Locke. So a lot of Texas fans have asked me over the course of the week, hey, what happened to our defense last week? And I can assume that those same questions would come up, and Todd Orlando will admittedly say this, we didn't tackle well, and they're not tackling well today, in particular in the, in the back end. The safeties are not taking great angles and not tackling well in space. First down to the 29, Greer finds a tight end over the middle, and it's Trevon Wesco, the redshirt senior. 
And he gains nine yards. Good rhythm here for Will Greer on this series. Getting the ball out quickly. He's accurate. And they haven't allowed that defensive line to provide any sort of pass rush. Second and one. Late substitution for Texas. Chris Nelson back in. And a handoff, Brown, Letty Brown, no. He won't get the first down. Ominahu with the stop. And that's a loss of one. Well, here's Ominahu, and he's going to come out from his defensive end position. He engages, and then he squeezes out, squeezes out, and he ultimately makes the tackle. Excellent job of extending, getting away from the block, and making the play in the backfield. Closing moments of the third quarter. Texas up 31-27, West Virginia finding a rhythm now on offense led by this man, Will Greer, the 23-year-old redshirt senior. Third and two, the handoff, McCoy. It looks like he has... I think he was short, Gus. Think so? Where this... Malcolm Roach brought him down, and he was short. And he was. You're right. And Roach did a great job because where he contacted him, there was no more forward movement from that point on. Just a huge stop from Malcolm Roach, who came back from injury today. Got back onto the field, 270 pounds, and he put it to good use there. So that'll take us to the end of the third quarter. 31-27 Texas. West Virginia with the football inside the Texas 20. And they have a decision to make. And because of the injury, they'll get the 10 seconds back. So we'll see what the Mountaineers will do right now. Fourth down and one at the 20. They bunch it up. Greer with the handoff. And that's the end of the third quarter. They'll take another look. But from right here, Mountaineers look short. We'll see right after this. If you want to keep up with me. Let's take a look at the scoring by quarters. Moments ago, this was the measurement on the fourth down. And then the reaction afterwards. Malcolm Roach with a huge third down stop. And then a slew of Longhorns on fourth down, making the stop. And how about that? After 813 total yards, UT pitching a third quarter shutout in a shootout. We start the fourth. Texas with the ball, Watson. And he is stuffed for maybe a half yard by David Law. And think about it, both defenses. I know West Virginia has given up points, but both defenses playing really well in that third quarter. Twice, West Virginia, when they were inside of the five-yard line, their own five, they held Texas to three total points. They got the fourth down stops, held them to a field goal. So both defenses in that third quarter, third quarter doing a great job, but obviously Texas's defense there with just an enormous fourth down stand. Second down to nine at the 21. Here's a handoff to Watson. Watson with a seam and a first down, but a flag. Holding offense, number 56. Ten-yard penalty from the... Oh, excuse me. Correction, defensive holding, 56. Ten-yard penalty. End of the run. Darius Stills. History being made at Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium today. That's two defensive holdings on defensive linemen. All right. First and ten, Gus. <laughs> Yes, as I said, history being made at Darrell K. Royal Texas <laughs> Memorial Stadium. Neither one of us agree with that call, by the way, for the record. The previous capacity record crowd, rather, 103-507 against USC on September 15th. 
today, 100,703, a new Texas Memorial Stadium record to see the Longhorns and the Mountaineers. First and 10 at the 45. And Watson will get inside West Virginia territory. Giovanni Stewart with the tackle, but now you're seeing Tom Herman say to his guys, okay, guys, let's impose our will on the yep. Mountaineers. We're going to run it. And that's his identity. That's what he wants. That's what he wants to do. That's the fingerprint of a Tom Herman team. Second down and four. they break this Mountaineer defense on the ground. Watson, first down. Kenny Robinson with the tackle. Watch this block here by Sam Cosme. He's going to come across, but then what you've got is David Long. He's coming and he's blitzing, and then right there, boom, he gets him in the backfield, and it allows Watson to just slip to the side and gain positive yards. Just an excellent block by Samuel Cosme. First down at the 42. Watson, stutter steps, gets through the hole, still on the move. Black gold, Texas T, the running game, effective for the Longhorn. Oh, those linemen up front, boy, they are blocking some serious stuff. Watch Cosme here. He's going to come in and bang, he gets the linebacker 34, Shea Campbell blocked up, and Watson does a great job of being patient. First down to 10 of the 30. This is the best that offensive line has looked in a long time, Gus. They are doing it, moving people. They'll run it again with Watson. Again, Watson on his feet, flags everywhere. Watson, a whirling dervish inside the 20. Reese Donahue finally with the tackle. Holding. Offense number 72, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. As Elijah Rodriguez, number 72, he's going to be trying to work against Kenny Bigelow, number 40. Watch him, he just kind of gets the back of his jersey, and Bigelow was going down anyways. The flag comes out. Still a terrific run. You talk about a rhythm, man. Trey Watson seriously in a rhythm right now running the football. He's seeing it, he's feeling it. He's got the instincts going. And more importantly, this offensive line in a rhythm. Run blocking for Watson. First and 20 at the 40. Let's see if Ellinger throws it now. That's the problem with that penalty, right? It takes that offensive line kind of out of the equation. Here's Ellinger, quarterback run. And Ellinger dives forward. David Long stops him. Clock keeps running. 11.46 and counting. So as a quarterback, this is this is your situation right here. Second and long. Get half of it back. Because third and 15 is nearly impossible. But third and seven, now you've got a shot. So you want to call something that can be conservative, that you know that you're going to complete. Look for a curl route, something along those lines that you're going to get half of it back so you can convert on third. 84 or nine. Second and 15. Ellinger. It's 84, Lil Jordan, but this time, Giovanni Stewart says no more highlight stuff. Lil Jordan, as he rides him out of bounds, no gain on the play. They went to that earlier in this second half, that little crossing route from Lil Jordan Humphrey, but this time West Virginia was all over it. Great read by Giovanni Stewart, who's an uh, undersized linebacker at 5'8", 195 pounds, but fast. Third down, 15 at the 35. Ellinger may have to really put this one up in the air now. Gets it off. Ellinger, under pressure, bounces out of the pocket. Becomes a runner. Ellinger, look at him. Smash mouth, first down, UT. They say he eats nails for breakfast. He may be short. 
by about a yard. Kenny Robinson stops him. Boy, second time today that on a big third and long, they're able to get all the way down there close. Boy, he's extending. He needs to get that ball all the way to the 20-yard line. It looked like he was just a touch short. Yeah, even when his elbow comes down and that knee comes down even before it, he's a little short of the 20. And with the wind here, I think this is the right call to go ahead and get Cameron Dicker on the field. Cameron Dicker, 10 of 15 on the season, along of 47 against Baylor from 38 yards away. And it's good. Dicker. The kicker, 34-27, Longhorns. Fox College Football presented by Volkswagen is sponsored by Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. And by Coke Zero Sugar. Fox College Football sponsored by Volkswagen. We've seen a game here today, folks. Outstanding play offensively by both teams, and the defensive effort has been there in the second half. It has, in particular for this Texas team that is coming out to play defense right now, and it's very reminiscent to what they did a week ago against Oklahoma State. They played really poorly in the first half and turn it around in the second half, and it seems to be more of the same for Tom Herman's bunch here this week at home. West Virginia, three drives in a row without a touchdown. And this one boomed out of the back once again. Thursday Night Football returns next week with the battle of NFL heavyweights as Cam Newton, Christian McCaffrey, and the Panthers battle Big Ben, Antonio Brown, and the Steelers. It all starts at 7.30 Eastern on Fox, NFL Network, and streaming on Prime Video. 9.38 to play in the fourth. Winner of this game, Gus, likely going to find themselves in Dallas in the Big 12 championship game. So you got 938 to put yourself in a great position to play for a conference title. Greer with the delayed handoff to McCoy. And Ominahu playing the run extremely well today. He's down. Boy, another front seven player for Texas. We've already seen today. A number of those front seven players leave the field. We had Brecken Hager leave the field. Marquez Bimage. Hager is now on the sideline in a sling. They can ill afford to lose. Charles Ominahue has been terrific today. West Virginia still with plenty of time. Down 34 to 27 with a Heisman Trophy candidate quarterback in Will Greer. Omenahue walked off the field on his own. Looks like he's fine. Second and seven of the 28. The Texas defense is starting to get stingy. Greer over the middle. And it's caught for first down by Trevon Wesco. Anthony Wheeler with the tackle. Nice route there. And Greer delivered a really accurate pass to Wesco, who's not used often in their passing game, more of a blocking tight end, in-line tight end, even with this spread attack. But right there, he gets his 11th catch on the year. A junior college player from Lackawanna College comes up with a nice catch for Will Greer. He's had a couple of catches today. First down and 10 at the 36. Greer thinks it reverse. McCoy. And McCoy dropped by Gary Johnson. Don't you get the feeling like you're going to have to see some David Sills here soon? Eventually. That's when they were in rhythm and playing really well offensively is when they had David Sills. His last catch was about 10 minutes left in the second quarter. He's got two touchdowns in this game. 
McCoy out of the backfield. First down, Mountaineers, as he crawls close to midfield. That's another thing they've done really well today. If they use their running backs to attack the linebackers for Texas, and they bring them out of the backfield, that time McCoy slips out of the backfield and is able to make a nice catch there. Now they'll bring in Martel Petaway, who's had a nice day on the ground. He's got 88 yards rushing so far today. Greer. 23 of 35, 281 yards passing, two touchdowns, no picks. First and 10 at the 49. Penaway. Nice cut. Lowers his shoulder. And he's starting to smell that first down marker as well. And a great block from the outside. Here we go. We're going to get the tackle. He's going to come all the way down. That's 53, Colton McKivitz, probably their best player up front. Really good player. And you can see him mashing down that side. And Petaway with a great read. Second and two at the 43. Greer winds up for the home run. With some terrific defense for UT. Chris Boyd was the GOAT of the Longhorns week last week. He was benched in the first quarter. Oklahoma State jumped out to a lead. When he got into the ball game, he led a couple of big plays behind him, and now he's had some great coverage down the field here today. How about this, Coach Herman? If, Cole, if Chris Boyd shows up late for a meeting, don't bench him. Just run him. <laughs> I think everybody would be happy with that in Texas land. <laughs> run him until he throws up. And a timeout called by the Mountaineers. Timeout. It's getting interesting West now. 7-18 to go. Mountaineers trying to counterpunch. Back after this. It's been a tale of two halves. First, it was follow the leader offense 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 back and forth all the lead changes some great catches on the outside by Humphrey then it was the fourth down stops of the second half both defenses flexing their muscle a little bit Texas and West Virginia and now we'll see exactly who can make a play here late and this is a situation that Texas is used to Gus they are constantly in these one score games seems like ever since Tom Herman got here as the head coach this is the type of ball game they've played Third down and two at the Texas 43. McCoy cuts it in. First down. Kennedy McCoy What a great cutback. And West Virginia gains 19 yards. What you get is too much flow from the linebacker. And what that allows is that you're going to get the running back McCoy. He finds a seam and then there you go. Now you've got the cutback. You've got that cut basically straight up the field. And he's able to go and get a conversion. And a new set of downs. First and 10 of the 24-yard line for West Virginia. New safety in the game because Caden Stearns had to come out. His helmet came off. Chris Brown in the game now, number 15. Bush the motion man. McCoy. And he's lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Charles Amenahu jumped on his back and took him down. Well, I got to give Chris Boyd, number two, a lot of credit in this ball game, And he was embroiled in some controversy after that game, not just for his performance, but then some back and forth with former Longhorns, Emmanuel Acho being one of them, back and forth on Twitter. But he has played great in the second half against David Sills, a large reason why Sills hasn't had a catch since the 10-minute mark of the second quarter. Second down to nine. Underneath, they find Wesco again. And... Trevon Wesco with another first down. He has been able to find soft spots right over the middle today. Yeah, hasn't he? He's done a great job of finding those soft spots. And Will Greer has done a great job of taking what the defense gives him. A 10-yard gain, first and 10 at the Texas 13. Hedaway back in the game and running back. Greer. Looking all day to throw it. Corner. Incomplete boy broke it up. Don't make that Anthony Cook. Boy, I thought he was beat for a moment. Watch here as Sims goes to the inside and then he gets back outside. Right there, I think he's beat, but then he's got to wait a beat for the ball. 
and Cook is able to recover and get that left hand. And how about the job of Cook of not making contact, even though that Sims had to make an adjustment on that football? Second and ten of the 13. Petaway. Petaway. Petaway again. 13 yard touchdown for the Mountaineers. And with 540 remaining in the fourth quarter, West Virginia with a chance to level this game at 34. Boy, just a mistake at the linebacker spot right there because all you're going to get here is you're going to get great blocks on the outside and then Pedaway finds the hole and then he's gone. Absolutely gone. No one to touch him there. And Anthony Wheeler, who's out of position, cannot make the tackle. Colton McKivitz with a terrific block. Extra point. Good. And how about this, folks? 540 to play in the fourth. Big 12. Championship implications on the line. 34 up. Texas and West Virginia. Fox College football presented by Volkswagen is sponsored by Wendy's Dollar Fries. Get any size you want for a limited time at participating Wendy's. And aerial coverage is brought to you by our good neighbors at State Farm. What a game, Parker. Oof. This is all you want, That's right? All you I mean, want. all the championship implications that you want, birth in that Big 12 title game on the line, essentially, for the winner of this game, 34 up. You got to love it. And they've played some great offense here today. And a couple of guys are starting to just put their fingerprint on this game. First of all, you've got Petaway on the West Virginia side, 109 yards rushing, and Trey Watson running the football for Texas. Well, this is the spot where you need playmakers on offense. And Texas is going to be looking for Trey Watson, a little Jordan Humphrey, and maybe Colin Johnson here down the stretch. Will Jordan back deep for UT. As Staley will kick it off. And little Jordan comes up to field it at the 10. He's on the move. Crosses the 20. And finally dragged down around the 23-yard line by Sean Mahone. So, well, so Tom Herman in his second year at Texas, 7-6 and six last year. They won a bowl game against Missouri. He's been doing an excellent job. Yeah, and I think the bit, part of the turnaround is finding a way, Gus, to win these games, the tight games. One and four last year in games decided by a score or less. Now this year, four and two. He's turned it around. They've been in six games, by the way, in this one-score mentality. That's the most in college football. Watson running it. No gain on the play as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Giovanni Stewart, number nine, again. We've called his name all day. That brings up second and 10. 5.16 to go. Texas with two timeouts. West Virginia with two timeouts. Keontae Ingram in the game and running back now. Ellinger, play fake. Over the middle. Caught this time by Beck. They missed that play twice for touchdowns, but when they needed it, Beck got his head around, and Elliger puts it on the money. Watch the fast flow you're going to get from the linebackers, and what that does is that allows Beck to find the seam, and then he just creeps right down the middle of the field. Unbelievable job there with the fake first, and then Beck getting himself down the field, and they finally hit it. They've missed that a couple of times. They finally connected. Gain of 19, first and 10 of the 41. Elliger again with time flat-footed now on the bounce Hellinger cuts it inside and crosses the 45 up to the 47. 416 to go clock still running Bigelow with the tackle there and one thing Texas has on their side a weapon as their place kicker Cameron Dick well he's made a big kick against Oklahoma, but he's missed a few kicks as well. So you know that the nerves are over there for Dicker. But a lot of time left. You can't be thinking about a field goal if you're Texas. What you want to think about is a methodical drive that ends in the end zone. Ingram. And Ingram trying to slide through the hole. Giovanni Stewart brings him down. But both defenses here in the second half 
have stiffened. Yeah. Therefore, you may have to think about a field goal, especially when you have a kid in Dickert that has some experience under his belt now. That starts with a conversion. Got to stay on the field here. Third down and two. Gallagher has been successful running the football today. Gallagher, play fake, sideline, back, and a first down, Texas. What a catch from Beck. Big that smile. <laughs> yeah, it's because he threw it low. He knows he got away with one there, by the way, and that was his 243rd passing attempt without interception. That is a Big 12 record. He passes Gerard Johnson from A&M. Did it in 2008, 2009. He is on some streak protecting the football, isn't he? Yes, he is. Threw two interceptions against Maryland week one. Hasn't thrown one since. First and 10 at the 48. Texas going to the running game. No, out of the sprint side, down the field, open, caught, touchdown, Devin Duvernay, 48 yards, Sam Ellinger, this kid, he's got silver bullets, Hadio Silver. A double move on the outside, Duvernay sells it perfectly right there to the out and then he runs right by Josh Norwood number four and Ellinger hits him for the touchdown great block in the back end by Trey Watson allowed Ellinger a little extra time and then he put it on the money Dicker for the extra point and it's good 41 34 234 to go in the fourth but here come the Mountaineers. You better not count them out. Forty-one thirty-four. Texas striking back as Ellinger hits Devin Duvernay. How about that series? Wow. Big catches. And you were absolutely right. They had to go for it and not think about a field goal at that time. Well, he had to be aggressive. Remember, Tom Herman told us yesterday, it, he he feels like he's cost them at times being too conservative. He wasn't conservative there. He went for it, and it paid off. But this one certainly far from over, Coach Herman. All the pressure this man has on him, Joel being the head coach of one of the most storied football programs in the history of the college game. And they want it now. Not yesterday. Now. And he's giving it to them. He's doing a great job he here. He is doing an awesome job here. This is a far cry from what it was a few years ago, isn't it? Yes. First and 10 of the 25. Credit Charlie Strong. He didn't leave the cover there. Greer. Handoff, McCoy, McCoy has had a wonderful day. Anthony Cook with the tackle. But Kennedy McCoy has run the ball with Hutzbach. 17 carries, 94 yards. As a team, averaging over seven yards per carry. That offensive line doing a nice job. West Virginia with two timeouts left. Second and two. Greer surveys. Greer bounces around. Dumps it off, and he has Gary Jennings who gets out of bounds. Nice job by Greer, buying time, and then he actually had a receiver streaking down the field. I thought he was going to pull the trigger there down the left side. He did the smart thing, take the first down, and he finds Jennings for a move of the chains. Head away back in the game, and running back for West Virginia. First and 10 at the 40. Push in motion. Head away. Chipping his way forward as he crosses the 45 up to the 47. Caden Stearns with the tackle. Two timeouts left for West Virginia. Clock is a factor at this point, but they've got great field position and a veteran quarterback. They know they can quick strike at any moment. They're one of the best teams in the country when it comes to explosive plays. They came into this game tied for 13th in college football. And I don't think I've ever seen this happen. I've never seen that before in my life. That's Anthony Cook on the other side. <laughs> Stuck at the bottom of the pile. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh, 
that's Josh Sills, the left guard. No malice there. No just, malice. Just a stuck shoe. Get your foot out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> Second and three at the 47 for the Mountaineers. Bush, the motion man. Greer, looking. Greer. And he has a first down to David Sills. They finally find Sills. I tell you, that's the matchup here. Now we're getting close to it. Minute 15, the matchup is Chris Boyd and David Sills. That's where this game is going to be won and lost. If they go somewhere else, it's going to be pet away on the ground. First and 10 at the 47. Greer's got to let it fly. Here's Greer. Over the middle. Caught. Close to a first down as Dominique Maiden comes up with the catch. 58 seconds in counting. And Greer wanted Sills on the right side. He had to get all the way back to his third man in the progression. Found him. And now Sills is going to come off the field. So here we go. Second and one at the 38. They hand it off, Petaway first down, and more. As he finally goes down to the 32-yard line. P.J. Locke, Gary Johnson in on the play defensively for Texas. Saving their timeouts. Need to start moving a little quicker right now. 33 and counting. First and 10. Greer, confused. Snaps it anyway. Greer, Locke. What a catch, Gary Jennings! Touchdown, West Virginia! Wow! What a throw by Will Greer with 16 seconds left! Oh my goodness! Is his foot down? It Absolutely! Is. <laughs> oh my goodness! not seen a throw like that in that situation that was an absolute dime and you know one thing Dana Holgerson Time is going for two West Virginia their second and a half it'll be 30 seconds in length you think he's going for two? the offense never flinched they ran right up there like they knew it before they went out there in the series I bet you he told them that if we score we're going for two is that smart they're on the road their defense has not played great today. I think he thinks his, his best chance to win a football game is he's got three yards with 16 seconds left. He's got one of the best offenses, one of the best quarterbacks in the country. He's confident. He doesn't care. I think he thinks this is his best chance to win the ball game is right now. Well, you said it, and here they come. On the road, this is the right play. What do you run down here? They're going to put the ball in the right middle. David Sills is going to line up on the right side. I would run some sort of an RPO so that they've got the option to either run the ball on the edge or get the ball out to the outside. Here we go. West Virginia down by one, going for two with 16 seconds left. And a timeout called by Texas. They had four wide timeout. receivers to that top side. Texas. Two of them are lined up basically as blockers. You could you could have seen them just chuck the ball out there quickly to T.J. Simmons, who is lined up as almost like a screen on the outside. If I was Daner Holgerson and Jake Spavadol, I would change the formation. Because right now, all Texas is doing in their huddle is talking about the formation that West Virginia just showed. There's no doubt about this that he's got Greer, meaning has the option to go either side he wants. Now he's going to talk to the official, Dana Holgerson. The courage, though, to go for two in this situation. Remember, Big 12 championship implications on the line. The winner of this game, odds on, will head to that title game. And they've changed formations. Gus, David Sills is matched up one-on-one -on, -one on the top of your screen with a true freshman, Anthony Cook. Remember, Sills is 6'4". Cook, 6 feet. They're going for two. 
Here's the snap. Greer underneath, and they get it. Sills ran a slant, used his body. Prior to the snap. But a timeout Texas call prior to the, the snap by Texas. What, what a move by Herman. I guarantee you they called that timeout because of the matchup that we just talked about. True freshman and David Sills, he didn't like it, and he called a timeout and got out of it. One forty, Texas Mountaineers going for two again, and they're down to the third two-point conversion play. They came out with a formation. Texas calls timeout. They go back to the huddle, come out with a new formation. They call timeout. Now they've switched it. Chris Boyd, who is the senior corner, now he's going to be matched up one-on-one. -on -one. Great adjustment by Texas. They're going to be at the top of your screen. That's Sills and Boyd right here at the top. They've also got a help man to take away the slant. This ball's going to go down to the right side. Greer in the gun. Greer, quarterback run. Greer, he got it. Touchdown. Two-point conversion for West Virginia. But a flag. Greer flashed the horns down. We saw Sills draw a flag after a touchdown earlier in the game. This is going to be an unsportsmanlike after the two-point conversion is good. The result of the play is the extra point try is good. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number seven on the offense. 15-yard penalty will be administered on the kickoff. That's number seven's first unsportsmanlike of the game. Will Greer with the two-point conversion. West Virginia up by a point, but Texas still has life. The Mountaineers celebrating as Greer scores the two-point conversion to give West Virginia a 42-41 lead, but that penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct could be huge. 100%, they're kicking into what wind is left. And you've got Cameron Dicker, who has made a huge kick earlier in the season in Red River. Little Jordan Humphrey is very good on the returns, so you're going to have a chance here with probably around 12 seconds to go. UT is out of timeouts, but you could, in theory, Gus, I think they'll probably start this drive around the 40 or maybe even closer to the 50, like the 45-yard line. And at that point, you need one or two completions near the sideline to attempt a long field goal with the wind. You could, in theory, attempt a 60-yarder with Dicker's leg. I saw him hit 52 into the wind in pregame. He kicked a 53-yarder in high school. So here we go. Little Jordan from the 20. Little Jordan cuts it inside. Gets to the 40 before being stopped with nine seconds left. Okay, nine seconds for Sam Ellinger. What he's got to understand, he's got, he's got no timeouts. If he completes this ball for a first down in the middle of the field, they have to race to the line of scrimmage and spike the ball to get it killed. Anything else, they've got to work outside of the numbers so his wide receiver can get out of bounds. You're looking right now to get to the 40-yard line to have a legitimate shot with the wind at something near a 57, 58-yard field. Goal. So they need about 18, 19 yards. Cameron Dicker was a hero against Oklahoma and Red River. Can Sam Ellinger get him another shot at it? Got these big wide receivers that he can take a shot with. Ellinger, eight seconds. Ellinger scrambling. He's got to throw it. Ellinger down the field and broken up. Josh Norwood breaks it up, and that may be the ball game. Boy, that play took a lot of time. Please reset the game clock to one second. I can't believe they basically set up for a Hail Mary there. They only needed an 18-yard completion to at least try a field goal at that point. Well, now you're stuck, and this ball's got to go into the end zone. Dana Holgerson went for it. He's one second away from it paying off. West Virginia with a 42 to 41 lead. And he's going to call a timeout just to make sure that he can talk to his guys and West convey the defensive philosophy for this Hail Mary. 
And what would the philosophy be? Knock it down. <laughs> <laughs> Don't intercept it. Yeah. Exactly. The one, the one thing you want to do is actually, if you can catch it, secure the football. Do everything that you can. But you want to do everything that you can to make sure, Gus, that you never give up position between yourself and the football. It's very similar to you played basketball. We all played basketball most of our lives. You can't play defense in the post if you just stand behind the, the guy in the post, right? Well, as a defender, you can't just stand right behind him and let him have the access to the football. And David Sills will be on the field in a defensive posture. He's 6'4", 210, the best wide receiver that they have. Hills lining up in the end zone. Texas will snap it from the 41. One second to go. Ellinger to the sideline. Ellinger finds her. They throw it across the field, and it's broken up. Batted around, and West Virginia finally claims a football and victory. Will Greer leads the Mountaineers on a dramatic drive. And two-point conversion. And the Mountaineers defeat the Longhorns 42 to 41 to improve the seven and one on the season. Let's take a look at our expectation shattering drive of the game sponsored by Buick and where, where else would we go? Will Greer and this Mountaineer team going down the field with little time left and just throws an absolute strike to Gary Jennings, gets his foot down, touchdown West Virginia, and then Dana Holderson makes the decision to go for two. Will Greer takes it in, and Tom Herman loses his second straight. Let's go downstairs with Jenny Tapp. Gus, he just said it here. That was fun. Coach, I'd say that was fun, and that was confident. The decision to go for two there. Take me through your mindset and the confidence you had in that move. Well, that was an easy decision when you got number seven at quarterback and 13 out there at wideout. You know, when they scored, I was like, good, they scored quick. Went to the offense and said, let's go score and then do what we do on a two-point play. Uh, we've been saving that one. We got a lot of confidence in it. So we, the decision was already made before we took the field. You've had success in this house before. And speaking of your quarterback, you said he's a professional playing the college game. What can you tell me about his ability to lead this team when it matters most? Well, I mean, he, I mean, Will, you're right. He's a pro. Will's a, what's going on? Seven's a pro. What he's got to understand, he's got, he's got no timeouts. If he completes this ball for a first down in the middle of the field, they have to race to the line of scrimmage and spike the ball to get it killed. Anything else they've got to work outside of the numbers so his wide receiver can get out of bounds. You're looking right now to get to the 40-yard line to have a legitimate shot with the wind at something near a 57, 58-yard field goal. So they need about 18, 19 yards. Cameron Dicker was a hero against Oklahoma and Red River. Can Sam Ellinger get him another shot at it? Got these big wide receivers that he can take a shot with. Ellinger, eight seconds. Ellinger scrambling. He's got to throw it. Ellinger down the field and broken up. Josh Norwood breaks it up, and that may be the ball game. Boy, that play took a lot of time. Please reset the game clock to one second. I can't believe they basically set up for a Hail Mary there. They only needed an 18-yard completion to at least try a field goal at that point. Well, now you're stuck, and this ball's got to go into the end zone. Dana Holgerson went for it. He's one second away from it paying off. West Virginia with a 42 to 41 lead. And he's going to call a timeout just to make sure that he can talk to his guys and West convey the defensive philosophy for this Hail Mary. And what would the philosophy be? 
knock it down. <laughs> <laughs> Don't intercept it. Yeah. Exactly. The one, the one thing you want to do is actually, if you can catch it, secure the football. Do everything that you can. But you want to do everything that you can to make sure, Gus, that you never give up position between yourself and the football. It's very similar to you played basketball. We all played basketball most of our lives. You can't play defense in the post if you just stand behind the, the guy in the post, right? Well, as a defender, you can't just stand right behind him and let him have the access to the football. And David Sills will be on the field in a defensive posture. He's 6'4", 210, the best wide receiver that they have. Hills lining up in the end zone. Texas will snap it from the 41. One second to go. Ellinger to the sideline. Ellinger finds her. They throw it across the field, and it's broken up. Batted around, and West Virginia finally claims a football and victory. Will Greer leads the Mountaineers on a dramatic drive. And two-point conversion. And the Mountaineers defeat the Longhorns 42 to 41 to improve to seven and one on the season. Let's take a look at our expectation shattering drive of the game sponsored by Buick and where, where else would we go? Will Greer and this Mountaineer team going down the field with little time left and just throws an absolute strike to Gary Jennings, gets his foot down, touchdown West Virginia, and then Dana Holderson makes the decision to go for two. Will Greer takes it in, and Tom Herman loses his second straight. Let's go downstairs with Jenny Tapp. Gus, he just said it here. That was fun. Coach, I'd say that was fun, and that was confident. The decision to go for two there. Take me through your mindset and the confidence you had in that move. Well, that was an easy decision when you got number seven at quarterback and 13 out there at wideout. You know, when they scored, I was like, good, they scored quick. Went to the offense and said, let's go score and then do what we do on a two-point play. Uh, we've been saving that one. We got a lot of confidence in it. So we, the decision was already made before we took the field. You've had success in this house before. And speaking of your quarterback, you said he's a professional playing the college game. What can you tell me about his ability to lead this team when it matters most? Well, I mean, he, I mean, Will, you're right. He's a pro. Will's a, what's going on? Seven's a pro. He happens to be playing the college game. He never got rattled. He kept playing. I was really proud of how he handled the situation. Thank you. Congrats, Coach. 1,100 yards of offense, 10 touchdowns, no turnovers. Greer, 28 of 42, 346, three touchdowns, and a two-point conversion that will be remembered in Morgantown forever.